This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Oh, hello there. Very nice to meet you. Well, let's get back to it. A once in a 250 year weather event could bring bitter wintry conditions across swathes of the country. And there is never any good news in a sentence that contains the word swathes. Correct. A sudden stratospheric warming event, which is associated with very cold weather and brought the beast from the east in 2018, usually hits the UK every other year. But the Met Office, full of experts, say that this extended winter period from November last year to March is the first time that three sudden stratospheric warming events have been recorded since records began, as in ever. A sudden stratospheric warming is a disruption of the normal westerly air flow. A sudden stratospheric warming is a disruption of the normal westerly airflow 10 to 50 kilometers above the Earth. This often makes the jet stream meander more, which can lead to the development of a large, high, uh, large area of high pressure over northern Europe at the Earth's surface. Are you following this? No. <laughs> it doesn't really make any difference. It's all just weather. Uh, the sudden stratospheric warming can block Atlantic low pressure systems, which are responsible for the relatively mild wet and windy weather that often occurs uh, during the UK winters and increases the chance of cold, dry weather in the UK. The chaos-inducing beast from the east snowstorm of March 2018. Blimey, 2018. Could it really be that long ago? It was before the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the thing, the menace. Two years before that happened. Blimey. And it's uh, 2024 now. So um, 2018 uh, from 2024. Well, any fool could do that. That's like uh, eight years. Eight years. <coughs> since the beast from the east in 2018, which saw heavy snow, ice and strong winds that brought the country to a standstill. Mind you, a light mist can bring this country to a standstill, so it's not saying much. But we won't get blizzards this time, or so they say. We will get a cloudy start to the weekend. Some drizzly rain is likely, but not what you might expect. According to the experts, the north and west will be m much drier and brighter than the south and the east. Can you believe that? No. I could check on that while you wait, but really, what's the point? Aha! Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh -huh. There you are, you see. Nonsense. It's not actually raining at the moment in Glasgow, but it will be raining tomorrow, and raining on Sunday, and raining on Monday, and raining on Tuesday, and raining on Wednesday, and raining on Thursday, and raining next Friday, and then raining on that Saturday, and raining on the Sunday, and raining on the Monday, and... What? Not raining on Tuesday the 19th. <laughs> rubbish. It will be raining on Wednesday and Thursday, though. So that's one day in the next two weeks. Not quite enough to dry out. Where was I? Oh, would you like to hear the long-range forecast for the next four weeks? No. Uh, okay, at first, next couple of weeks is till the 21st of March. A change to brighter, drier weather and lighter winds before more wind and rain from mid to late next week, followed by Periods of mild, cloudy and wet weather across the southeast, while the northwestern areas stay more settled. No, they don't. I've just explained that they don't. And then, the end of the month to the first week of April. Blimey, April already. Can you believe how fast it's going? It's practically Jesus' birthday. And then, to the uh, end of the first week in April. Rain in the south, northern areas drier than normal. Temperatures will probably be near average or slightly above overall. <gasps> Temperatures will probably be near average or slightly above overall. We'll take it. Oh. Paul says, if George Galloway has to remove his oh-so-carefully placed hat before he enters the Commons, do you think it only fair that Michael Fabricant removes that straw hat that he's... <laughs> the, the straw hat that he has perched upon his head? It's not straw, it's plastic spaghetti. He said the Chancellor should have introduced a hat tax. That'll learn him. Yeah, George Galloway, uh, um, I've, I've heard from his supporters that he has to wear that hat all the time in order to hide uh, an injury. Now, I looked at the footage closely and I could detect no such injury. So I suspect, until proven otherwise, that he, um, that he affects the hat in order to 
differentiate himself from all the other bald, middle-aged white guys there. It gives him a certain je ne sais quoi. I don't know what. The French should have a phrase for that. What is French for je ne sais quoi? Aberdeen. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Nick. Daniel. Uh, one thing I have to say is I'm in awe of your mathematics skills. Yes. 2014 you minus, know, minus 2018 is 8. Any, anybody knows that. It's just simple maths. Yeah. 7, 9, 64. Exactly. Yeah. 7, uh, nines. People just don't know anything these days. 7, nines are... Si no, that's not right. 7, nines are si not 64. They're 65. Yeah, this that's is, right. This yeah. is perfectly, perfectly simple stuff here, Daniel. Come on. Yeah. See me yeah. after class. Oh, God. Uh, back to serious matters. Um, is anyone going to miss Theresa May? <laughs> 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 well, kind of, yeah. I mean, it is amusing watching her try to walk in those shoes. Give it up, Mrs. M. You cannot walk in those shoes. Try some flats for crying out loud. Give your back a rest. Yeah, she's still learning. She's like a sort of um, learner driver, wobbling all over the place. Yeah. Still learning yeah. to drive her own body. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> she well, does look extremely head, uncomfortable in her own body, doesn't she? Almost as though she's, um, she's trying to run it in for a friend. <laughs> yes, yeah, her major achievement is sticking around in the House of Commons for so long. Yeah, that's right. She's not done very much, even as Prime Minister. And peering, uh, like boring holes in the backs of the heads of uh, whoever happens to be uh, at the dispatch box at that moment. Eh, Bodge? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Exactly. Yeah, she just uh, stares through people like yeah. a gorgon or something. Mm. Mind you, I mean, considering all that we've had, you know, uh, right, if you go right the way back to uh, the, the very beginning... I think this is nonsense. Uh, him onwards, oh. I think uh, she, she might be the, the least bad of the lot. I was almost going to say the best, but uh, that, that's incorrect. Uh, no, the least bad. Well, Liz Truss beats them all, doesn't she? have been totally incompetent. The most and, bad. Uh, Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I was watching... Uh, a series of clips from Have I Got News For You on YouTube, and oh, one yeah. of them was James O'Brien, ah. who is a broadcasting genius like yourself. And what did he have to say? Oh, I think he was... Uh, just think? You mean you didn't actually watch it? You're just wasting time flipping he between clips, and uh, you'll never get those hours back, Daniel. Uh, no... I focus and watch a few minutes oh, of very right. good material. Yeah, exactly, a few minutes. And nobody has got the patience to watch anything anymore. And, and YouTube, YouTube is um, right up there as the uh, organisation that is responsible for this. Because, I mean, I did this myself, and, and I stopped myself doing it from that moment. I th I, I've just spent the last hour, I thought... Not in, not listen, going between different tracks, you know, I'd start with Steely Dan and then there'd be somebody else and Genesis or, you know, whatever. And they, and they throw up a list of, if you like that, you'll like this. And I didn't get to the end of a single track before, <laughs> before deciding to listen to another one. And, and that's just, that's just so it, isn't it? You, you're you're, you're the const point, constantly unsatisfied and just flitting about without paying attention to anything. You're missing the point. What's the point? Well, you can just uh, take it as it comes. No, um, no don't it, take it, it as it comes. Pay attention. Listen to a whole album. Don't flip around. and listen. Watch a whole television programme. Well, I do that, yeah. I do mean, you? I've, do I've, you? I've got do you? 400 CDs. Yeah, but when, when do you watch three... them? You don't. You spend when your life listen. watching YouTube. A, 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 a uh, little no. clip here and a little clip there. Here no. a clip, there a clip, everywhere a clip, clip. I've got a hi-fi, I've got a TV, I've got oh, everything. get him, he's got a hi-fi. I can only dream of having a hi-fi. Mm. Oh. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks a lot, uh, Daniel. Appreciate it. I have no idea what that call was about. <laughs> what was it about? 0345 John texts, Nick, I was in Glasgow for 45 minutes today and it didn't rain once. Can you believe that? No, John. Carol texts, in Trump's long-winded and rambling speeches, it's a wonder he doesn't claim to have won World War I and World War II single-handed. <laughs> I totally won those wars. Me and Vladimir Putin. He's a great guy. He likes me, I like him. 
He says, um, <laughs> it's a wonder he doesn't claim to have won World War I and World War II single-handed. Yet, Trump has the gall to mock Biden. Hey, did anybody see the, um, the State of the Union address? I didn't watch all of it. I just watched the closing arguments. And um, it looked pretty good to me. It looked like he's, um, he's still alive. It's a great result. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Listen to him. He knows everything. Martin texts that Nigel Farage wants George Gallup warns, not once. <laughs> That would be an entirely different sentence. Uh, in, uh, I'm going to use the word entirely twice in the same sentence. And I just used the word sentence twice in the same... Three times now in the same sentence. From the beginning, Nigel Farage once... Again, I did it. Never mind. <laughs> you fooled me once. Shame on me. Chingford. Hello, John. Oh, hello, Nick. Yes, um, sir. Actually, before I got on topic, some good news this week. Ah, I don't know if you heard. Finally. But uh, Murdoch is uh, pulling the plug on talk TV um, from summer. It'll only be available uh, on... Pack my life in any way, shape or form, because I've never seen it. No, no I mean, it's good that it's uh, not there anymore, really. So Is it? One down, one to go, really. Anyway, and and he's getting married again, or he's getting um, uh, engaged oh, again. Yeah, again, yeah. again, again, again. Yeah, but but more mature this time. I think she's 67 or something, which is uh, a bit more mature than the norm, I, I guess. I, uh, anyway. Anyway. Um, <laughs> um, no, I wanted, there's something that cheered me up a bit. Um, Piers Brosnan has um, nominated uh, Killian Murphy as an ideal Bond. I, no. I kind of... No, I no, 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 no. He's too weird looking and thin. Yeah, but I, but I, 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 I disagree. I mean, well, I, think, I, I agree. Well, um, I, I just think he's one of those brilliant, quirky Irish actors that comes along once in a lifetime. The only person I can compare him with is um, Patrick McGowan. He's got that kind of dangerous sort of. Um, no, he looks sick. You know, have you seen that, uh, Oppenheimer? Well, no, the, the problem is, Nick, I, I mean, I, I know you don't do sob stories, but I haven't been no. out for four years because I've had three operations in right. the last okay. well, quarter, if quarter year. So it's I'm, available I'm on a television near you right now. So if you see Oppenheimer, you'll see his face in close-up throughout no, the entire I, I, three... Seen, I, wait a minute. Throughout the entire three hours, and he just looks... I don't know, he just looks weird. You don't want James Bond to look weird. No, but I think he lost a lot of weight for that role. I don't and, care yeah, about I mean, that. I, I, he you, can't you, put muscle on that fast to uh, do James hmm. Bond. I mean, have you never seen Peaky Blinders? No. No, but he's brilliant in that. I mean, right. I does, he, think does, he look, does he look weird in it? No, no. I bet he, he does. He looks dangerous. He looks like somebody <laughs> who could kill somebody and enjoy it. Right. I mean, they, they tap that, you know, from the in, in the original um, Doctor No, when Connery shoots Anthony Dawson and he's run out of bullets and he says, you've had your six and shoots him, watch the body twitch. Well, and don't uh, he tell us. He's really enjoying it. Spoiler alert. Warning, warning. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, how can you do spoilers on a film that's 65 years old? Because, John, know? people get born every day. They haven't heard um, Dark Side of the Moon. They haven't seen that film. They haven't seen Apocalypse Now, if you can believe mm. that. But, but my fantasy would be Killian Murphy as Bond, directed mm. by Quentin Tarantino. That wow, that would be the old. Absolutely, never, gonna, never happen. gonna happen. No, not now, no, not no, ever, never. Happen. And uh, Quentin Tarantino would be abysmal as a, a Bond director. That's that's not what you want from Bond either. But anyway, good thinking, John. Keep thinking because it's uh, what you do. The be what you do the best, the best. You are the best at thinking, and I really mean that. No, Killi Cillian, Cillian, Cillian Murphy. Not James Bond. I've sort of um, run out of patience with this whole uh, James Bond uh, thing. I, I've said over and over who the new James Bond should be, and it's that bloke out of Starred Up, whose name I can never remember. I bet my glamorous assistant can come up with that name straight away. I don't even know what Starred Up is. I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. No, that, fil that film Starred Up, where, he, uh, where you get a star uh, if you've killed somebody. Jack O'Connell comes the answer from next door. <laughs> Correct, Amundo. Jack O'Connell should be the new James Bond because he looks, he looks like rough, like um, uh, the uh, like Daniel. What's it? 
out of the uh, new James Bond, Daniel thing. You know, the Daniel out of the uh, new James Bond. He, he looks like he's been in a fight. Looks like he's been punched in the face a lot. And that's what you need. Craig Daniel. Craig Daniel. Is that his name? Doesn't sound right. Craig Daniels? Daniel. Anyway, that bloke who plays James Bond. Can't be suave anymore. He can't be Roger Moore or um, the other one. It, okay, message coming in. It should be Tom Hart. No, too famous. Too famous. You can't have a James... Although, you know, you could say Roger Moore, but those times are over. You could also say that Roger Moore was um, was uh, um, sort of trialling his uh, role as James Bond all the way through The Saint. So it was pretty much the same character, more or less. But uh, no, Tom Hardy, we've seen him too often. No, it has to be the, the O'Connell bloke. It, he has to look as though he's been in a fight a lot and could fight. Whereas that Cillian uh, Murphy just looks uh, just strange. And I don't mean that to be offensive. I mean, you know, it's, that's obviously what they were going for with Oppenheimer, with those uh, weird cat-eye close-ups of his face all the time. They were trying to make him look weird with great success. Les Tex, I have opened my eyes this week. Please make sure everyone gets an ID to vote. Oh, I, it's, it's my responsibility. It says, try and encourage your listeners to understand economics by listening to Gary Stevenson and then badger their, MP, their, their spelt wrong, their MPs to reduce... I, I hate to be pedantic about that, but I don't know, there's just something about that that really winds me up the wrong way. It's probably because it's pretty much the only word that I know absolutely positively and totally how to spell in any given circumstance. And I congratulate uh, myself for that. Thank you. I say. He says, try and encourage... He, Les, I don't know, could be a bloke, could be uh, a woman. Sexist. Try and encourage your listeners to understand economics by listening to Gary Stevens. Oh, economics. Boring. <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. And then badger their MPs to reduce the wealth gap by taxing the mega-rich. Otherwise, the election after next, we will see the fascists make the government. Says Les. <laughs> wow. I had no idea it was that serious. Who are the fascists? It sounds, it sounds like an 80s pop group. <laughs> like an electro pop group. By the fascists. <laughs> In fact, how come there's not a pop group called the fascists? I mean, wouldn't that be perfect? Ahmed texts... I read somewhere that if you earn over 80 grand a year, plus expenses that can easily double your income, and you're still struggling to pay your bills, there's a, lot, there's a pot of money called taxpayer, which you can access, which can help with the financial burden. Take that off your shoulders. Can you confirm if this is true or not, says Ahmed? Yes, Ahmed, I'm afraid it is. And uh, how many have I got so far? Oh, my God. They're, they're already running away with me. All these tech. How do these people get my number? Here's an actual real-life uh, person who wants to speak to me using their mouth. Mertha Tidfield. Hello, Jeff. Well, Nick, how are you? I am I great, am mate. <laughs> nice to speak to you again. Um, I, I, I was really cheered up um, with some good news for everyone. Oh, yeah. Um, the Daily Express has said that Brexit is a wonderful success. Is it? Well, that's a, that is good news. It is. By what, um, by what was... measure? Just out of interest? <laughs> well, well, that's what it was. They just said it's oh, a success. Right. Well, so, that's, I mean, I, I'm convinced. Uh, well, yeah. What do you want, facts or <laughs> some sort of thing to back it up with? Yeah, some sort of st substance. This is, don't, I'm not asking for reams, just one single solitary fact, that's all. Well, I'm afraid we can't supply that. Oh, OK. But... Yeah. I'll just have to take it as read. <laughs> yes, um... I did go to Paris to see André Rieu. Do you know that guy? Have you, you ever come across You him? went to Paris? <laughs> yes. Did you just say that? You went to Paris? Well, just now? I did. You just come back from Paris? Well, not long ago, but I have gone back, yes. To see um, André Rieu. <laughs> Rieu. Is it Rieu? <laughs> Yeah, Andre well, Rieu, yeah. right? Yeah, he's the fellow yeah, that is yeah, on. Yeah. Uh, he's the fellow that is on Sky Arts twenty four hours a day. I mean, seriously, they don't have time on the uh, on their schedule yep. for any other program apart from Andre Blumen Rieu. Yeah, and um, it's the same show for twenty thirty years. I think yeah. he's been at it. 
Very, very successful. Show. Huge audience. Massive. Yeah, and they're all middle class white. White, yeah. Yeah, um, mm. so it's it's an interesting show. Um, when it I is. There, I've, I've seen it a couple of times. Um, I, uh, I I took um, uh, one of my nearest and dearest to the cinema to see it uh, as live. Okay. And um, I went with trepidation and I ended up enjoying it. It was. It is. It's strangely enjoyable. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind uh, of like how I would imagine classical music used to be presented when it was written. You know, with the audience, uh, you know, yeah. chatting amongst themselves and dancing and, uh, you know, grooving in the aisles and uh, all, all of that. Not sitting down bolt upright as audiences to classical music do in in, a, in this a country. Bow yeah, and a bow exactly. Tie and all yeah, the rest yeah, of it. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, um, the Seine was in flood. And the. Um, oh, the Seine was in flood. Is that what you just said? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, just to put you in the picture. And I was amazed at the amount of water in the thing, in, in, in the river. Uh, it, it, it is obviously... The amount of water in the river, right? Insane. It, was, it was insane. But the thing is, the, what I'm trying to convey to you is... What is that it that you're trying to convey? Just uh, well, spit it out, the man. Good, the, good news, the good news and the bad news. Yeah. We are exceeding 1.5. And for the last what, 20 years, we've been having climate conferences, okay. which has been telling me that 1.5 mm -hmm. is the tipping point, which gives us a 50-50 chance of surviving climate change. Yes. If we can stop it. We've already exceeded it. Mm -hmm. I know. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty bad news, unfortunately. The oceans have never been warmer, and uh, by a significant amount. People are freaking out. And uh, there's yeah. this big glacier called the Thwaites Glacier, which um, is losing massive amounts of uh, ice, more so than it receives in new snowfall, snow, snowfall which means um, it's going to live up to its name. Do you know what it's called? No. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Okay. Uh, but um, I, I would save time and freak out now, if I were you. It'll uh, save you uh, ah. freaking out later. All right. Thanks a lot, Jeff. He went to see Andre Ryu with the uh, you know the ladies with the big uh, pastel dresses on and uh, the uh, opera singers and uh, that whole you know all of that stuff. Very very enjoyable. Why not? People love it. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call o three four five six zero six zero nine seven three care what this guy thinks? No! So we're all in great danger and we're about to drown. This is a story from the Mail, which uh, which I'm sorry to uh, have to tell you, contains uh, warnings of climate change. What? Yeah, in the Mail. They, uh, they accidentally slipped a story in. John Moore is on a mission to slow down the melting of the world's widest glacier. The 74,000 mile Thwaites Glacier, located on the western edge of Antarctica, wherever that is, is losing about 50 billion more tons of ice than it receives in new snow, snowfall. Professor Moore, oh, he's an expert yet. Professor Moore told the Daily Mail that he and his colleagues want to stop the glacier's retreat by... <laughs> Are you ready? Placing a 62-mile-long curtain in front of it to block warm ocean water from melting the underside. It's melting alone already contributes to about 4% of the world's sea level rise. And if it were to melt all the way, here comes the alarming part. It could raise sea levels around the entire world by as much as 10 feet. What? 10 feet. And that's how it earned its uh, nickname, the Doomsday Glacier. That amount of sea level rise would put coastal cities around the world at serious risk of major flooding. And given that a light mist in this country puts even our inland cities at a risk of major flooding, that's not great news. Their plan? Anchor a giant curtain along 62 miles of seafloor to block most of the warm water from melting the glacier from underneath. <laughs> that's what's going to save mankind. A curtain. The estimated cost? $50 billion. 50 billion, not million, billion. 
Professor Moore said that he is optimistic that the 29 countries in the Antarctic Treaty will foot the bill. Shall we go ahead and assume that they will do no such thing? <laughs> While gifting oil and gas companies huge subsidies and tax breaks, I bet that the 29 countries of the Antarctic Treaty will do absolutely nothing at all. Because that would be long-term thinking. Spending money to prevent something happening doesn't give politicians any glory. They can't point to nothing and say they made that, which is why the human race is doomed. Short-term thinking. You know, instant gratification, like a toddler. But we can be sure that it's nothing to do with man-made climate change because as any fool know, that is just a hoax to make Donald Trump use less hairspray. You don't need to put all of that product in your hair. You just don't. Well, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I agree with Donald Trump. What? <laughs> It's totally true. But, and it's a big but, before the Industrial Revolution, when humans began belching millions of tons of CO2 and other greenhouse gases into the Earth's atmosphere, this Thwaites glacier and other glaciers had normal cycles of thinning and thickening. In the winter, the glacier would grow as the ice thickened, and in the summer, it would shrink back as the ice thinned. But as the planet warms, there is more thinning than thickening, just like your hair, Donny. Don't be rude. So we'd all better get used to treading water. Unless you don't believe in science and you think that it's all just woke nonsense, in which case you could use your ignorance as a flotation device. Hounslow, hello, Brian. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Sir, um, sir. All right. Um, you were talking about James Bond earlier. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, <clears throat> now... Uh, could, do you think we could have uh, people like uh, John Sim uh, do, uh, or Adrian Lester? You know, John James Sim, Bond is, who's yeah, uh, Life on Mars. Oh um, no, no, or, no. Or, uh, because you see, uh, he doesn't he, look like British. he's been in a fight. He doesn't look like he's been in a fight. Yeah, well, James Bond uh, needs to have beaten a lot of people up. He's a killer. Don't remember. Don't forget. It is true. Yes. Uh, uh, or you know, you, you have um, uh, the, the the women's lib. Uh, so who used to say Jodie Whitt Whittaker played Doctor Who? Don't you think she could do like a Jane Bond or something? You um, have the women's lib. Is that what you just said? Yeah, the, the, yeah. <laughs> we're, uh, we're, because women want equal rights now. Uh, yeah. So well, then they it, should it's... make their own Jane Bond. But they, a, a woman can't be James Bond. How could she? They can they can uh, uh, change the script here it, and there. It, they can it, do it, all it, sorts it, of things. Well, why would they do that? They they can make their own franchise, make a billion dollars by ma making their own um, <laughs> female led franchise. But they ain't going to uh, <clears throat> do it by um, uh, you know trampling onto James Bond's territory. That's just it, silly. Actually, Barbara Broccoli has said that she um, is going to uh, change it now. It's not going to be the James Bond, mm. uh, you know, like in the 60s and the mm. 70s. It's, right. it's going to be uh, different now. Yeah, well, so, it is uh, different now. It, the the uh, Craig, uh, what's it, is not the same James Bond as was, as was in the 60s and the 70s. No, that's right. More... They put more... More action into action. it. That's in... right. That's what we want. We want a hundred million pounds worth of stuff blowing up on screen. Yeah, well, uh, we're certainly going to get that. I, uh, but uh, uh, come on, uh, who do you think? Come uh, on, uh, I've told you already. It's that bloke out of Start Up, whose name <laughs> I've only just been told, and I've forgotten it already. Something Start Up. Connor, I've, I've never seen. Well, you, I, 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 you want to you put it on your list, Brian, and uh, let me have a full report on my desk first thing tomorrow morning. All right. Yes. Okay. Thanks a lot. Oh, th another satisfied customer. Oh three four five. 6060973. Uh, Simon says, on an alternative radio station that is not as good as yours, I heard somebody saying that Donald Trump's pre presidency had no lasting impact on anyone. I have to agree because I can never hear the word China without it being in his voice. It's very, very, very annoying, says Simon. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, that is just a fact. Uh, Ahmed says, I read somewhere that if you earn over 80... Wait a minute. I read this one already. 
Alex says, I don't understand this talk of a May election, given that seven silly bins is... <laughs> seven silly bins is a perfumed princeling who has never been told no in his life. Why would he allow us to tell him now in such a humiliating fashion? Yes, no. No, 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 no. A thousand times no. I would not be surprised. I'm, I'm going to keep saying this until it doesn't happen. But I would not be surprised if the next election was not cancelled for our safety. Something is bound to, to come up between now and then. They'll put out an alert. Emergency, everybody to get from street. Emergency, everybody to get from street. Jeff says, Griff, no, not Jeff, Griff. C G hey, Griff, can I call you Jeff? He said, it's been a long-standing convention that some MPs quote lines from critically acclaimed authors in the attempt to gain heft and gravitas. So I am waiting in anticipation of George Cat in the Hat Galloway to make his maiden speech. I wonder whether he'll be saying any lines from his creator, Dr. Seuss. A listener with material. Oh, no. <laughs> that was a long way around to that. And Alex says, I... No, wait, I've done that. What consequence... Uh, oh, there was more. There was actually more to that text. It finishes, there's about the perfume princeling never having, never having been told no. It says, what consequences will there be should he attempt to delay or cancel the election? After all, Brexit and COVID prove that they can get away with anything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, they can get away with anything. I mean, so far, that, haven't they just? Let's have... Um, uh, no, wait a minute. Dartford, Aiden. Good evening. Yes, Hi, sir. Nick. Aiden. Hi. Yeah, I'm here. Yes, Aiden. Good evening. How are you? <laughs> Let me say this. Hello. Yes, Aiden. <laughs> right. Um, you were talking about Killian Murphy. Is that um, how you pronounce it? It's not not yeah. Cillian. Killian. Well it, well, it could be. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty silly. Um, but. <laughs> So this this might sound a bit weird, but then quite a few things do on your show, and that's what makes it so <gasps> funny. Well, <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> so um, I'm in my early sixties, and when early sixties, was... yeah. <laughs> so when I was at school, there was this kid, and um, he used to smell quite badly. He had a very strong smell of urine about him. Oh. Okay, and uh, so many, many years later, when the first time I tried to watch Peaky Blinders, mm. his face was identical to this kid's. And I had to stop watching Peaky Blinders because all I could get was receiving, looking at him, was this horrible smell of urine. Uh, and that's, uh, I'm really apologetic to saying <laughs> this because I'm sure he doesn't. Um, I am absolutely certain that uh, Killian or Cillian, however you pronounce his uh, silly name, is um, it, it smells uh, fresh as a daisy. The yeah, daisy, I'm sure he does as daisy well. Daisy smell? It just probably not. Well, they, they do to insects. Insects probably can smell them a mile away. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I agree with you. He's, he's a, I think he's a very strange-looking guy. Yeah, yeah. You can't have that for James Bond. James Bond has to be, a, a, a killer, and B, a lady killer. Yeah. In that order. It was the James Bond. Oh, my God, I've forgotten his name. He did a couple of... Uh, Roger... No, I was going to say Roger Daltrey. Roger Moore. Dalton. He was quite a good Bond. Who, Roger Moore? No, Timothy Dalton. Oh, Timothy Dalton. Yeah. Yes, the problem with Timothy Dalton's uh, James Bond, though, is a, a lack of, um, what should we say, personality. It was a bit... Yeah, maybe. It was a, I mean, I'm sure he's a brilliant actor, but uh, yeah. perhaps it was, just wasn't his the right part for him. It was a bit of a no-fun zone. Yeah, he, 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 I think he was cast as a bit of absolutely everything. Mr. Suave, Mr. You know, Mr. Feisty Man. No, Mr. I think he was supposed oh, to be Mr. Oh. No-Nonsense. Oh, yeah, because Mr. Did, he followed... Um, who, who did he follow? God, oh, where, goodness. Where, where was uh, he, he in the uh, mm, Did in he the follow Roger Moore? P quite possibly, yes. Could have been Roger Moore. Um, Roger Moore was too soft, though, and too suave, yes, he? But he, too he silly. brought comedy into yeah, his exactly role, didn't right. he? It was yeah, a bit yeah. of fun. <laughs> Uh, a, a little bit, yes, but watching them now, you do notice how <laughs> incredibly slowly he moves. Him and uh, and, and that Jaws fella, 
the uh, you know the big guy with the metal teeth. Uh, well, he, he died. I didn't mean, he, a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Two arthritic old men running <laughs> after each other. It was. Uh, <laughs> that's not what I want from James Bond these days. It just no. isn't. It's got to no. be. It's got to be fighty. It's got to look like he's been punched in the face a lot. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Okay, and it and can't look weird. And I'm, I'm sure that Cillian, or Killian, whatever his name is, um, doesn't look as weird as they made him look in Oppenheimer because they were trying to get a point across about the uh, state of his uh, mental health, I'm sure. But um, I just, no. Too thin, apart from anything else. No, 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 no. 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 <sighs> Rebecca says, it's not raining in Glasgow right now, but it is hellish windy. Got a suggestion for a replacement hobby for jigsaws. Take up macrame. <laughs> no. <laughs> Says making pretty things out of knots gives a lot of satisfaction and it's also therapeutic. There's been many a neck I've imagined tying those cords around. A great for getting rid of tension, says Rebecca, who doesn't appear to have got rid of any tension at all. You're scaring us, Rebecca, with your macrame. No, I, I just bought another jigsaw puzzle, which was probably a big mistake, huge. Um, but I was tempted because it's a, a, it's um, the image is of the London Underground. So I thought, well, this is not just recognise a shape, which is what the last jigsaw puzzle I did, which is why it annoyed me so because I'm not, I don't really have much um, uh, sort of experience or uh, ability in recognising tiny little shapes. But because it's uh, of something that I know, kind of. Not off by heart, but I'm, I know more or less where things are. Then it's um, it's not just a recognise the shape part. It's it's also um, a, a test of my mental acuity. I'm having my uh, mental acuity tested. Oh no! <laughs> I get an F. Have I done the break yet? No. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. I really like you. Do you like me? Yeah, sure. Why not? Rafi texts. Do you remember? Do, do you remember when Mrs. M was doing her ABBA dance moves, the robot? <laughs> yes. Well, who could ever forget? I mean, she's all angles. Is the thing with Mrs. M. Plus, uh, you know, she 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 looks as though she's about to fall over because she cannot walk in those shoes. Kick off your comedy clown, clown shoes, Mrs. M. Put your feet up. Relax, you deserve it. Uh, anyway, he says, uh, do you remember Mrs. M was doing a ABBA dance moves, the robot? ABBA is my favourite, says Raffi. You should listen to them more. More than what? He says, keep up the good work and don't forget about Ange Agent Orange. How, how could I? How could I? <laughs> it's impossible. Uh, speaking of which, Oldbury, Ranjit. Hey, Nick, you okay? Yes, good, thanks. Good, 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 good. Yeah, just regarding James Bond films, yeah? Okay? It, I think it really doesn't matter who plays them. It as does. long as the story's good, yeah? Hang on, no, no, no. It, it, no, it does. No, it, it, it does, yeah. It really does. But, the story's going to be good for a start, the plot, yeah? yeah? Mm. And then the title's going to be a one-word title, like, you know, Goldfinger, Golden Eye, Thunderball, Gold... not Quantum of Solace, uh, <laughs> yes. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yes. What yeah. on earth does that mean? A Quantum yeah. of Solace? Oh, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and then, obviously, the, you know, yeah, it does depend on who, who the hard man is, yeah? Yeah. But, but the thing is, like I say, it's a story. Story, that's, yeah. That's what yeah. Um, big studios tend to forget about, is the story part. They've they got all the yeah. stunts right enough, and they've got the, uh, you know, the right actor and, and all of that. And then it's, it's almost as though it was an afterthought. They think, oh, yeah, what's the story? <laughs> I mean, on some of the James Bond films, right, <laughs> halfway you think, what, 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 where are you what, going? What is happening? Yeah, no, I, I usually yeah. think, who, who is this person that he's um, trying to kill um, and why? What what is yeah. this all about, Alfie? I mean, the other one is you know uh, Johnny English. Right? I think I think so. he's been he was Ron Atkins and he was quite good in. Um, it was, it yeah, Johnny English. There's, a, sort of there's like, another yeah. thing I've never seen. No, expecting it, it no, expecting it that. to be awful. I no. skipped it entirely. 
No, I think you, you might you might quite you know quietly enjoy. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, okay. see, that's no good if you quietly enjoy a comedy. You're supposed to be no, laughing out loud, no, and this is exactly why I didn't watch it. No, I think you'll enjoy. You know, okay, like remember, then. remember Hong Kong Fury? No, I didn't watch that either. The cat when you, when you was a kid, the the no. cat used to do all the, no. the anyway. No idea. The main thing I want to talk about, oh. yeah, you know, like now, what's going to happen in America soon, right? Your orange man going to come back? I think, yeah, more well, than likely. I don't know. The entire world seems to be talking itself into this happening, but it, it ain't necessarily so. We got um, months to go. November is when the uh, when the, mm. the people go to the polls in America. Yeah, and then it's January when he takes over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a long time. It's nearly a year, yeah. yeah. By by but, February, we'll be um, running for the fire extinguishers and put, trying to put the world out. <laughs> and I think Putin is, you know, rubbing his hands oh, with yeah. glee, right? He'll be doing he's absolutely right, he's everything get... he can in his considerable power to make Donny happen, yeah. Yeah, and then he, he obviously made Brexit happen, right, which leaves us isolated, mm -hmm. right? Well, if so, he didn't make it happen, it couldn't possibly have worked out any better for him. Well, it has worked out fantastic for yeah, him, for Rutan, right? For um, too. Yeah. 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 And then the thing is, you know, when they say when America catches a cold, when America sneezes, we catch a call. What's yeah. your uh, prospect of Boris Johnson <laughs> returning, <laughs> you know? The botanist, yeah. No, yeah. no, he no. can't possibly do that. I mean, we we cannot go back to that future. We can't. No, the thing is, everybody's jumping up and up and down about Farage. Yeah, I think Farage is definitely a has been. Right, he ain't gonna ever come back. Right, because the the. If Lisa, he did if, the what do you mean by uh, has been? But when when was he ever? Uh, oh, no, when has he, he, he ever he's been? Never been? Yeah, he's he never been. been. He, he yeah, tried. Yeah. What is it like five times to become an uh, MP? Last time he he lost to a bloke in a dolphin suit. <laughs> so what you know? What, what what really worries me is not who the leaders are. Is who actually puts the leaders there? What's their mental capacity on when you put that cross by someone like? Are you talking Johnson? about the voters or the people who come yeah. up with the money? The voters. Oh, the voters. Well, I asked, uh, uh, don't ask the voters what they think, because the danger is they'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Off their heads. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, this, you know, this year there's massive elections all around. You yeah. know, I mean, I, was, I, 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 the reason I haven't called for a couple of weeks is I went on holiday to oh, India. what sweet relief. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that's what I was thinking. I thought give everybody a break yeah. Yeah, for a while. Yeah, thanks. I wanted to go. I wanted to go and see where Jonathan come from, Calcutta, but that's like I think about three thousand miles right. away. I have Calcutta. no idea what you're talking about now. You're, yeah. you're talking about yeah. somebody yeah. else who calls this show. That's it's a bit too. Um, you, yeah. You're getting a bit too. Uh, you know, inbred. No, he, he, he's from Calcutta. That was the yeah, original well, capital city of India. Okay. Anyway, so what's your a, what's a your geography lesson now? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> What's your? What do you think about Boris? You think Boris Johnson might come back? I think you know because no. when these Tories get a hammering, yeah, yeah mm. there, there's nobody else. There. I don't like Boris Johnson. Right? I'll be watching that program on. There's the nobody else that is remotely likable. I think that's it, isn't it? There, there yes, isn't anybody else in their ranks that is remotely likable that you would um, th th even contemplate for one single solitary second having a drink with. Now, mm. if you had a drink with Boris Johnson, of course, then he'd spill his drink over you and then skip the part about buying his round. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is they're, they're going to have to pull something out of the hat that's going to fool the people. Right. I think so, that they, their plan is to just salt the earth as much as they possibly can, make it as difficult as they can for an incoming Labour government, mm -hmm. and then just um, sit on the sidelines and blame Labour for everything that ails uh, the, the the country. From the single yeah. second, from the single second that they get in to uh, number ten, the Tories are going to be blaming that government for everything that's wrong with this country. You oh, know that they will. Oh, oh. I think they're doing that now. They start, they're starting to blame Labour <laughs> yeah. about what's going to happen. That, <laughs> that is so, true, yeah. yeah. Here, Ranchi, I'm going to have to go, but thanks for that. That is true, yeah. They're, um, the, the plan, as, as far as they have a plan... We have a plan. Pa yeah, yeah, sure, sure you do. And the plan appears to be to uh, pretend that they have not been in power for the last 14 years, and this is all Labour's fault. They've started that before, <laughs> before they've even lost the election. Amazing. They're getting their excuses in early. 
Uh, how's it working out for you, by the way? Terrible. 0345 6060 973. Hey, if you're on, um, uh, uh, what is it? Oh, yeah, WhatsApp. You can WhatsApp us, baby. It's the same number. 0345 6060 973. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. This is absolute tosh. think you're talking to well let's see now i believe that i'm talking to wayne who is calling us from canvey island hello wayne how are you going nick how are we going it's a long time since i've spoken to you ah. many years now <laughs> many years <laughs> so what have you got for us wayne right i'm going to tell you a little funny story well i'll be the which, judge of that right which happened 41 years ago in pinewood studios mm-hmm I was working on set in Palmer Studios. I was an elf for Santa Claus, a movie at the time. <laughs> you were yeah. an elf. Apple Blossom was my name. Apple Blossom was my name. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, with Donna Still, Dudley Moore, Burgess Meredith, and a few others. Hmm. You know. Um, what was Dudley anyway, Moore like? Dudley Moore was a nice fella. He loved to play his piano. Didn't so he, he had yeah. actually a piano put into his room. Right. But you'd hear it all the time. He, yeah. that, what, it was a really, really... And he only lived down the road from where I come from anyway, so... He was know, a great... He, he was... A, he was. Well, I don't know about great. Maybe that's going too far. But he was a very, very good uh, p- pianist. He was a jazzer, wasn't he? Yes, that's right. That's mm-hmm. correct. That is totally correct. And everybody would literally stand around and listen to him play that piano. And yeah. he got joy out of it when he done it. But now we get to the juicy parts. Ah. All right. Right. Thinking to get to the juicy part. Now, we're talking 41 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was 21 at the time when I um, first went in and done Santa Claus, a movie. Um, It it was a break time, and I've gone in to use a toilet. Oh, is that where this story is going? In the toilet? Yep. Yep, it goes into the toilet. It goes into the toilet. Because <laughs> I never, until the day I die, I'll never forget it. So I'm standing at the urinal. Oh. Who, who should walk in? Roger Moore. Oh, yes. So he's coming. He was actually working on the set next door doing uh, 007, whatever, James Bond. So he's looked at me, and I've looked at him, and I went to him. You're not as big as I thought you was. Oh, no, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. And he laughed. Oh, Wayne. (laughs) (laughs) You are a one. That is is a true... He's not as big as what people think he actually is, uh, as in height-wise. Well, that's what I hope that you're talking about, yeah. I I would imagine he'd be over six foot tall. He must be. No, he's not. He's about five foot nine. No. Coming up to six foot. Yes. Oh, come. Yes. No, wait Honest. a minute. Wait a minute. Five Honest. foot nine coming up for six foot. Yes. There's a, yes. There's, a, a, a got, there's a yard between five foot nine and six foot. No, no listen, you've got to remember in them days they used to wear platforms. So if you want to go <laughs> over six foot, then there you go. Right. <laughs> Roger Moore was wearing three-inch heels on the yes. set of James Bond. I seriously doubt that. Yeah, I'm telling you. I'm All sorry, right, I swear to okay. you. Okay. Right. I, I mean, I mean, oh. I met Grace Jones. I, I met Christopher Reed before he had his accident. Well, what these are you? these are all tales for uh, another show. But I want you to leave us um, uh, just <laughs> standing at the urinal, wondering what's just happened. Thanks a lot, Wayne. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. I don't believe I've ever struck up a conversation with a person in uh, the toilet. Not now. Not ever. Never. Not once. Mind you, um, uh, Roger Moore hasn't uh, walked in on me. You know, doing it. <laughs> it might. Um, uh, I might be tempted to say something, but I probably just wouldn't do it. But that's just me. That's the difference between me and Wayne. You see. 
Wayne's chatty in the toilet. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mike says, uh, apparently it's become more common for recruiters to use a robot for first interviews. Affirmative. He says, is it okay for my robot to stand in to answer any questions? No. What? I, what, I don't know what, you, what you're talking about. More common for recruiters to use a robot for first interviews. Well, have you heard what, um, what robots are going to be sitting in on? Our medical appointments. What? Yeah. While we're um, unburdening ourselves uh, all over the doctor, the uh, robot will be uh, sitting there listening to every word that we're saying and writing it down. It's all going to go on your permanent record. I'll come to that later. 0345 Winchester. Hello, Simon. Hi, Nick. You right? Yes, good, thanks. Did you watch the State of the Union last night? Pardon what? Did you... Did you watch the State of the Union last night? Oh, no, I saw the last five minutes where he was oh. uh, giving it large. He was great. Yeah, look, I mean, he stumbled a couple of times, but to try reading a speech of that length without stumbling. I can barely yeah. get through one single sentence on this show without stumbling over my face. <laughs> but what I wanted to say was, right, you know, like, conservatives... <laughs> whether, whether, yes. Whether, yes. Whether it's in this country or whether it's over there. Right. Small C conservatives, yeah. Yeah. What the hell is wrong with them? They're all sitting there with a face like thunder. Yeah. Nothing he said made them, um, well, made them do anything, really. They just sat there. Um, Although, just, there was that moment when he said, um, when Biden said, you know, there's uh, there's an, an ex-president of this country that uh, has been uh, sucking up to Vladimir Putin, and that is a disgrace. And mm. that, um, the uh, the religious uh, fruitcake behind him, who's oh, yeah. now the Speaker of the House... Another Johnson. He um, he nodded in agreement. Did you see that? Uh, I was watching him more than I was watching Biden. Yeah, because... just to see what he would do. And he actually oh. nodded at that point. I mean, the screaming Mimi is going to have an absolute fit when he well, hears he did... about that. Oh, so shut he... up! He did. This is why I'm ringing. Oh. So imagine a caged gorilla, yes. right, uh -huh. having, a, having a tantrum mm -hmm. that he cannot do anything about. Right. Shaking the bars and running around his cage. Yeah, very, very Just presidential. Thinking, I can be yeah, more yeah, presidential yeah. than anybody. Than anybody. So, he, mm -hmm. so he took to two Truth Social oh, God. many, many times, yeah. but on one of them, he posted a video of Biden giving his speech, mm. and he turned the um, Biden and uh, Kamala and all that into Disney characters. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I saw that, yeah. Oh, my God. This is a man... That could be, probably won't be. I'd like to say he won't be. Did, 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 well, it's, did, a to, it's a toss of a coin at the moment. Yeah, I know. He's um, no, he, he's is. an idiot. Well, he he's a very smart idiot, and he uh. positions or he places everything he says at the level of his fans. I love the poorly educated. So there's no point in uh, you know talking up to them. You talk down to them, and they love it. Yeah, I don't think he's going to win. Right. I think I do not believe those polls for one minute. Um, and what's bizarre is that the American economy is outpacing every other nation on Earth. I mean, it's going absolute gangbusters, and people in America—it's it, hard to 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 rem to recognize in this country how desperately poor we are compared to yeah. most of the other uh, countries in the first world. I mean, we're, we're right at the bottom of the list. I know we are. We're a rich country right now, but only because the city of London uh, has squillionaires in it. Everybody else yeah. is uh, in, uh, as indeed Johnny Rotten was describing oh, in, uh, in pithy terms. I might get on to him in, uh, in a while yeah. as well. Is Everybody is are? poor in this country, apart from a vanishingly few number of people who are spectacularly rich. Whereas in Germany, the wealth is spread out more. And in America, it's spread out more. And they, they earn about twice as much as we do. And, and, th and the things that um, are important for their lives, like a roof over their head and a car and the rest of it, 
it costs about a half as much as it does in this country, so which makes them about four times as well off as we are, which is how it used to be in the 1970s. You know, you used to go to America in, in the in the 70s and the uh, early 80s, and you'd just be absolutely stunned with the stuff that they got. They got three cars in a four car mm. garage. They got a fridge so big you could walk. Hey, they got br uh, fridges that you could walk into, Bodge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 <laughs> and um, yeah, and and all of the rest of it. They they were living a, and still do live a lifestyle that we could only dream of in this country and yeah. um and and yet the people there aren't feeling it because gas prices are slightly higher than they used to be but it would still be an absolute gift if they were at that price in this country oh, they, no, they, they just don't know they're it. born over there but they want i don't know it just seems unreasonable that um that the economy under joe biden is besting the economy under trump on every measure and still people aren't happy yeah, but you know what it is? What? Because uh, when Trump was in, that was when COVID hit. So Trump showered them all with money. And they remember mm. that. That's what they remember. And now... They don't remember they uh, shining a light into, um, no, into no, their no, bodies they don't and remember any of that. drinking but bleach. I got, I'm going to leave you with a, with a quick statement and a question. Right. John Lydon. Yes. Bearing, bearing in mind that Andrew Moore interviewed yesterday, mm -hmm. don't, right? Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> and, um, and the question, and the question is, what is it? Bearing in mind that all the good things that Biden was saying, what is it that conservatives actually want? Power and money, but not necessarily yeah. in that order. Well, there you go. Anyway, thanks, Nick. Nut nutshelled it for you, Simon. Thanks a lot, mate. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. They want, they want, well, the people behind the throne want power and money. What the, what the people who do the voting appear to want is a dictator that agrees with them on the issues. And that can um, um, punish anyone that d disagrees with them, potentially to death. That appears to be where we're going. There was some some uh, wag went into the street on uh, for one of the American talk shows, and it asked people what what would they prefer? Would they prefer um, a, uh, a, a another Biden presidency, or would they be, or would they prefer a dictator who um, is on Vladimir Putin's <coughs> side? And they all they all went for the dictator. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather live in a dictatorship. They said, morons. We're surrounded by morons. And uh, it's, it's quite possible that they'll get precisely what they want, which, of course, is not what they actually want. It's what they think they want. Because when people start to um, uh, punish those that, that they disagree with, then that circle gets ever more large. And it might eventually include you. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Right, so what are we doing? Given we're doing a radio show, uh, but it does remind me that I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin. Oh, right, yeah. I think you'll love it. If you wish to be amused, it's right up your alley. It's uh, about 45 uh, to an hour long. Comes out twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? In which the delightful Carol McGiffin and I try to solve people's problems while laughing our faces off. If you have a dilemma that you want us to solve then simply send it to the following address, Nick and Carol at global.com, N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com, and prepare for total satisfaction. Oh, right, yeah. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? York, Jan. Hello, Nick. Yes, Jan. How are you? I am great, mate. That's good. Um, I've been listening to some old shows from when we were in lockdown. And Which ones? Well, um, what I did was I went as far back as I could. Mm. And I've just been through lockdown. And I'm just, uh, we're coming out of it now. I mean, sort of end, back end of May. Oh, you're talking about the shows as they went out on the air? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. We it's weird listening back to that old stuff, isn't it? It's it, like, is. it seems like they're described, or uh, I, I guess I, uh, I am describing uh, something that happened to another person in another life, but it happened mm. to us, Jan. I know. But it's not all doom and gloom. There were some quite funny things. 
Yeah. Do you remember the, the chap who said you could make um, uh, masks out of bubble wrap and rubber bands? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't? Yeah. Okay. Hey, kids. Warning, warning. Don't do this at home. <laughs> and then there was that brilliant idea you had for people with a nail salon. They could put their nails, uh, they put the hands through the letterbox. Oh. And do the nails that way. Yeah. What a great idea. Yeah. In fact, that's probably an excellent idea, regardless of whether you've got uh, COVID uh, running through society or not, is, um, you know, because then te nail technicians don't have to bother with all that uh, boring chit-chat. They can just, That's right. Somebody can just uh, stick their nails through their the, the slot in the front door and mm. they can give them a once-over. Brilliant idea. Isn't it? Mm. But uh, what, uh, I'm, you know, I'm really t talking about was that the times you said that we've been shown a better way of life. Yes. Um, but we haven't learned anything, have we? We've gone straight back to where we were. I don't think that's true. I, th I, I think you there's know, a lot... Yeah, no, I don't. I think there's a lot of people now who have taken advantage of that, uh, you know, working from home thing and uh, oh, yeah. four days a week instead of five and they're just sort of re-evaluating their life because I think that you, you sort of go through life head down staring at the ground. You, you don't it, you don't really get your head up and, and take in what's actually happening around you. This is your life. This is not mm. a rehearsal. This is it. It doesn't get any better uh, the second time around. There is no second time around. So uh -huh. um, I think people just sort of, they woke up a bit. Yeah, but what, I'm, what I mean is that there's, we still, there's still there's much traffic about, isn't there? Oh, People that. flying, flying all over oh, the world, yeah. you know. Mm, right. Well, you've got to, uh, if, if, you know, if you're going somewhere, you've got to get there. Yeah, I know, but they should do it less, don't you think? Uh, less than what, though? I mean, if you start rationing out trips, then um, I'm not sure. I, th I think there's probably something to be said for making the method of travel less polluting. Mm -hmm. um, but um, if you if you start telling people, well, you can only go go abroad once every two years or something, then they'll yeah, probably chafe at that. What about all these politicians who will go on these? Well, these what's it abroad? And oh well, there's, there's no need for that, is th there? They should be thrashed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, COP28, what are we on now, oh, COP28? Yeah, not much COP at all. Yeah, exactly. And, and what happens about that? Nothing. Nothing at all. Ridiculous. No, quite right, yeah. Did you hear about the uh, the big glacier? I just to give you the bad news. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Curtains. Mm. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course, you were sat there in your marigolds, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, I was. That was pain because uh, you put your marigolds on to uh, do your dishes, and you have them on for like three minutes tops. But I had them on for three hours. You would not believe mm. how much your hands sweat. There was just giant pools of water yeah. in these things. I, ha I kept having to um, to drain them on <laughs> <laughs> by tipping them up and letting the uh, the the, uh, the moisture run off onto the carpet. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Oh dear. Can I just mention something else? Go on then. Did did you see last week's um, Radio Times? No. It's still... Uh, they still make the Radio Times? Oh, yes. What for? Well, so that you know what's on TV ah. and radio. Well, let me tell you what's on TV. Nothing. nothing. There's <laughs> nothing ever on TV. No, I'm I not. don't know how those stations uh, still exist. How can ITV and BBC One and BBC Two and uh, Channel Four still exist? I mean, when was the last time you watched anything on any of those channels except for the Antiques Roadshow. Oh. Love that programme. I watched something on BBC Two tonight. What? Monty Dom's Spanish Gardens. Oh, right. Well, that's right. OK, I can understand but, but that. Anyway, what I was going to say was, um, the front cover, uh, it was Rod Stewart and uh, Jules Holland. Yeah. And Rod Stewart... It looked as if he was using the same makeup as uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really and the, the same hairstylist as well. I mean, I that there, he's got. I don't know what it is that's floating above his head. I guess it's a hair. Must be. What Rod Stewart? Yeah. It's I mean, I, have, I haven't seen him in a good long while, but um, he used to have this bouffant. Um, I guess that was in the seventies when he thought that we thought that he was sexy. 
Mm, no, not really. Not, re- <laughs> not really, no. <laughs> yeah, it's a no from Jan. No. Mm, All right, well, I'll look it up on an, uh, uh, in a news agent near me. All right. Yeah. Thanks yeah. a lot, Jan. Cheers, my dear. 0345 6060 973. Well, you're going to buy that magazine. It's not a library, you know. Rose texts, so annoying how Sunak smooths problems over, e.g. Michelle Thing's libel case. Always the same, whatever the issue. Emollient tones, basically everything is all right. Well, it is for him. Short of personal tragedies, he and his chums live in world everything's all right. They're wallowing in money like hippopotami in mud. Nothing can touch them, says Rose. Excellent use of the uh, plural of hippopotamus. Very good work, that, Rose. 0345 Let's see now. Um, East Yorkshire. Hello, Mike. Hi, Nick. Yeah. Um, talking about old shows. Um, there was, I watched one this week, which was Michael Parkinson, the Peter Cook interviews. Oh, yes. I taped no, that. that. I haven't guy, seen it yet. That guy was hilarious. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen him for, it must be 30, 40 years since I've actually seen him on screen. And it was just as funny as when I first saw it. The right. guy's brilliant. Right, just to be clear, we're talking about Peter Cook, not Michael Parkinson. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, oh, whoever was in the studio, because there were various different people in being interviewed at the same time, yeah. they had everyone in stitches. I mean... It, Um, It's funny how uh, Michael Parkinson was so revered um, as the great interviewer in this country, but I think probably because he was the only one. There there wasn't anybody else doing it, was there? No, and he did pick very good guests. Um, Well, I'm sure that because they had the choice of everybody that that happened to be coming through this country at the time, because there was no competition. Like on the, the late night talk shows in America, there's massive competition between them because there's about, I don't know exactly how many, but it must be at least a half a dozen, probably 10 talk shows on a daily basis. And they're all, they all want the same guest. They all want Arnold Schwarzenegger and Tom Cruise and, uh, you know, um, and, and all the rest of them. They want the big, big stars. But um, they can, you know, a big star can only do one of those shows. Uh, so it's you know the the rest of the week it might be a bit thin on the on that show but uh, the thing with Parkinson was he had the choice of everybody that was coming through here so there was nowhere there, w- well, there wasn't anywhere else for them to go. No, no, there was one guy though who wasn't a big hit till he went on Parkinson, um, and I used to work with this Glaswegian bloke Glasgow, Billy, because nobody yeah, else could understand B- him. Billy Connolly. And he came back from yeah, he came back from Glasgow to Leeds, and he said. I bought you tickets for the club this weekend. We're going to the club. No arguments. You've got to come and see this guy. Mm. And I said, don't. It doesn't matter. Come and see him. And I went to the club and it was Billy Connolly. Yeah. He was absolutely hilarious. The he following was. week, he was on Parkinson for the first time. I remember that show. Uh, and I remember the gag that went around the country. And the very next day, he was pretty much a superstar. Do you remember the, 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 the guy... <laughs> I probably, I probably can't tell that on this show even now. He, um, his wife died. Do you remember that joke with the with the bike? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, falling was, about we were. <laughs> but he did actually pick Billy Connolly when he wasn't known, and which right. was a, a great pick. Whoever selected Billy Connolly, yeah, that's right. Well, that was his. Yeah. I believe that that was his first appearance on that program when he did that bike joke. Yeah. With the uh, the man whose wife had died. <laughs> I wonder if there's anybody that doesn't know that joke. Uh, but uh, So you'll be able to recreate it in your own mind, because I'm certainly not going to recreate it here. Um, no. But, uh, yeah, certainly one of the funniest people that has ever lived. The, um, actually, well, the main reason I sort of rang you up, though, was um, one that's just been mentioned, sort of, Michelle Donnellan, and we end up paying for her libel talk. Yeah, can you believe that? I mean, we had to pay for Johnson when he was sat there with it. He was on either side of him saying, no, don't say that. Yes, yeah. you can answer that. And we paid for that. We're paying for this. It was a private tweet. I know. Not on the ministerial thing. So why are we paying for it? Well, they're, they're very, very cautious with the public's money. They don't want to waste the public's money. So they keep telling us over and over uh, again. Yeah, sure. And then the other one, Gillian Keegan, who is the education secretary, was yeah. at an education leaders meeting. And they were discussing Ofsted inspections, and they were explaining how how it can be quite oppressive. I've been through quite 
of fuel and it can be quite pressurised. Mm. And so he said to this meeting, if they were rude to me like that, I would just punch them. I would <laughs> stand for that. What? This is the Minister of Education. <laughs> oh, stroke. The Education Secretary. We are in big trouble in this country. Warning, warning. Wake up, people. It's happening. It's happening right now, right in front of our faces. All right, thanks for the warning there, Mike. Cheers, Cheers mate. Man. 0345 6060 973. It's worse than I thought. Well, I have detailed files about all of these things, but uh, uh, yeah, and, um, and not enough time to get through them all. But I'll do my, I'll dip, 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 do my best. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. And remember, darling, I don't work before 10 in the morning and never after 4.30 in the afternoon. Those are my strict rules. Dave texts, with regards to countryside drivers, which we weren't talking about, he says, uh, you'd have thought that they'd be more calm and relaxed. The reality is that they're bordering on psychotic. When you've got a car speeding at you at 80 mile an hour down a narrow countryside lane, your only option is to swerve into a ditch or slam into a pothole. I agree. What is wrong with people who uh, drive down country roads? Maybe they're all um, hopped up on the smell of manure and sheep dip. Yeah, I'm, I'm on about three or four pints of sheep dip a day now, man. But I can handle it. It's just not very good for my fresh breath confidence, that's all. Sandbatch. Hello, John. Uh, I, uh, um, I, I was listening to all the uh, Jamie Bond stuff before, and I just thought, think uh, Jacob Rees Mark would make a good Bond villain. <laughs> no, a villain. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, he'd yeah make a good I mean, villain, or he, he might be might be good as M. No, not M. Q. Q. The guy with the gadgets. The, yeah, co the, uh, he, the comedy act. He could have Richie Sunak as one of his um, dwarfs. You know, dwarfs. Um, yeah, hanging around with do his... They have, uh, do they have dwarfs in James Bond? I'm not sure. I think it that's... Will be uh, when he, it that's, would be when he was in the... When he's in it. That's yeah. um, The Wizard of Oz, you're thinking. Yeah. Different. Well, they're all dwarfs, anyway. Um, the, the thing I wanted to ring about was the non dom thing. Yeah. Everything's gone quiet. You mentioned the, the Labour idea. And we're going to do non doms right. And what? And, and what's after that? No papers have said anything. No media have said anything. Mm. Uh, are they scared of upsetting all the Russians in, in London? <laughs> yeah, they ain't going to do nothing about non-doms. E even, uh, they, they might uh, do something that's just lips, that pays lip service to doing something, but they aren't going to actually do something any more than they're going to tax the rich. Exactly. And I think it's just, <laughs> it's a big con. We fall for these gangsters called politicians. And it's just one big con. I mean, well, what's the other thing? Um, you know, getting the money back from the um, COVID crisis mm. and uh, from all these um, yeah, sure. devious people. Yeah, sure they will. Yeah, sure they yeah. will. Yeah. Uh, Labour would do well if the, if, uh, uh, the Labour leader who claimed he was... Uh, uh, prosecutor for he, the government. He didn't claim he was. He was. Well, he was, and he was a prosecutor for the uh, for the crown. Yeah, I want him to tell us that he is going to go after all of these people that have stolen our money and make them pay. I, I want uh, I want to see justice served. Yeah, and if know, he could only yeah. tell us that, rather than give us the impression that he's just going to let it go, which is, I believe, what he's is exactly what he's going to do then uh, that would be seriously disappointing and might affect his, uh, his, uh, at least some turnout. Probably won't yeah. affect the result, but it might affect the turnout because people might be um, disinclined to vote for him in, any, in uh, you know, vast numbers. It would but, be a good idea if he said that and he could I say... I wish he did. Uh, like the Yang say, nobody is above the law. Well, let's not get carried away. <laughs> 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 but I mean, but the, I mean the whole. Uh, I mean, quiet. Labour have gone quiet about. Oh, they pinched our non doms idea. Yeah. 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 So what? Well, the, the reason that they um, that they had that idea is because they were going to use the money that they saved in order to feed starving children. That's I'm not making that up. That's a that's a true fact. Yeah. And because the Tories have now supposedly done done it, that they have reaped that money and and given it away 
to um, to the rich, essentially. I mean, not necessarily the rich, but the richest among us have benefited the most from uh, yes. that last uh, budget. So so they've used the money that the Labour Party was going to use to to <laughs> feed starving children. Yes. And yeah. they've and they've given it to their to their mates instead because uh, you know that sounds like the regime to me. Well, why don't why don't the Labour Party says well, well we don't believe them. It's a con. Um, well, uh, I think they, they, do what they yeah, like. We're going to get that money back. Right. Well, then you see they're laying traps everywhere, and part of the uh, I believe part of the uh, the, the, the this sort of uh, trap um, regime that is going on now is that um, they will make it impossible for the Labour Party to come in and not raise taxes in some way, just to pay for the things that we are uh, yeah. that have been cruelly denied, like health, for instance. Yeah. And so yeah. they will then say, aha, there you are, we told you so, they're the party of high taxes. And, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say some of the Labour, part, uh, Labour politicians leave me a bit sort of... Uh, yeah, I know. You know, mm. I wish he had some um, gonads. <laughs> <laughs> All right, th thanks a lot, John. Time for you to go. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. And I mean that in the nicest possible way, by the way. Uh, Rob Tex, buy hi-fi, buy vinyl records, grow up and get with it. Please, says Rob, I will not do anything of the sort. I'm all about streaming now, baby. I'm hip. I'm with it. Kilburn, Joseph. Hello, Nick. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I heard you talking about there's nothing on terrestrial television. That's correct. And I'd heartily, a bit of homework, mm -hmm. I'd heartily like to recommend to you on Sky Arts this evening, 8 o'clock, it was a, a tale about the uh, sisters of W.B. Yeats. It was absolutely fascinating. Oh. It was narrated by Imelda May, and there's a very, very moving uh, ending of the, sto of the uh, story about the two sisters. Wow, that sounds great. It's really well known. Yeah, awful. No, it's not boring, I can assure you, Nick. It's not boring. I it will uh, the way stimulate you. The way, well, it doesn't sound stimulating to me. <laughs> Well, talking about Billy Connolly... Plus, by the way, plus, hang on a minute, plus, your your suggestion is that I watch something that was on at 8 o'clock? You think I have yes, a time tonight. machine? Sky Arts, Freeview yeah. 36. Yeah, but it's 20 to 12. I can't watch something that was on about four hours ago. It might, it might be repeated, you never know. Oh, well, it's, uh, it <laughs> most certainly will be repeated if it's, if it's on Sky Arts. Up, uh, yeah, I'm not I, uh, going to do five that. five stars, Nick. Yeah. Oh, Billy Connolly mm -hmm. and the Incontinence Trousers. Do you remember those? Uh, the Incontinence Trousers. The Incontinence Trousers joke. Uh, Do you don't remember that? It's, maybe it's before your time, Nick. Well, I seriously doubt that, but I just have perhaps <laughs> forgotten it. But I, well, I do, I sure. do know one thing, Joseph, that I do not want you to tell it to me, because it's all in the telling. But thanks a lot, Joseph. I've already forgotten the uh, what what you uh, suggested. I just listened to so, something about sisters. No. <laughs> Let me think about that for a moment. No, 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 no. Yeah, the sisters of a poet. Anybody want to watch that? No. Um, Phil says Tom Hardy should be the next Bond. No, I've said that already. I please, I refer you to the answer I gave some moments ago. It should be that bloke out of Startup whose name I can't remember. <laughs> Craig says. Trump warned his dinglings that Pennsylvania be warned, warned his dinglings that Pennsylvania be renamed and no longer exist if the Democrats get in again. Does any of this make sense? No. Shall I try it again? Trump warned his dinglings that Pennsylvania, maybe there's a word missing. I'll try maybe, may be renamed and might, there's another word that's missing, might no longer exist if the Democrats get in again because that's what they want to do, says Craig. What are you talking about, Craig? Pennsylvania will be renamed and no longer exist. Well, why rename it if it doesn't exist anymore? Uh, because that's what they want to do. The Democrats want to rename Pennsylvania and make it not exist anymore. 
well, having never been to Pennsylvania, I, um, I agree with this idea. What on earth have we ever had from Pennsylvania that's worth having? I bet nobody can uh, think, think of a single solitary thing. Okay, here we go. Former President Donald Trump bizarrely claimed that if he loses Pennsylvania, they, in inverted commas, will change the state's name. <laughs> Trump made the claim in a speech to thousands of members of the National Rifle Association in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, on Friday night. He said, we totally have to win in November. I can't do the voice. He says, we have to win in November or we're not going to have Pennsylvania. They'll change the name. They're going to change the name of Pennsylvania, Trump said. <laughs> he said, all over the country, they're taking the name of George Washington off high schools and other things. He said, that's one even I thought was safe, Abraham Lincoln and George Washington. Their names are now in danger. No, we are going to have to win. You're not going to have a country anymore. You're not going to have a state anymore. You're not going to have anything, Trump concluded. In other words... The American dream is dead. Dead. <laughs> I mean, it's the thing with him is it's funny, but it's also terrifying because he is serious. All of the things he says might sound ridiculous, but um, he's actually serious about it. Craig says, uh, no. Archie says, James Bond movies, Mr. Trick in the 80s with a female Bond who should have been Grace Jones. No. No. Karen says, next Bond, Andrew Scott, please. No. Alan says, James Norton, perfect actor for the new James Bond. No, 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 no. 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 All of those wrong. Too suave, too pretty, or handsome, whatever you want to call them. Um, and none of them look like they've, had, they've been in a fight. Definitely not. None of them look like they could kill somebody, apart from Grace Jones, of course. <laughs> she... She'd kill the driver if her limo arrived late. That's what she looks like to me. A little bit scary. I told you about that time that, um... Because she used to live right next to me. Or she had a flat next to me. I never actually saw her. But I saw people who looked like they hung out with Grace Jones on the balcony every now and again. And, um, somebody was in the, uh... In the supermarket right beneath her flat. And she, uh, 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 vaguely aware that this apparition had just come in, this vision at uh, the corner of their eye. And she, she was there with, the, like, the full regalia, this sort of three-foot-wide brimmed hat and, uh, you know, and all of the rest of it. And she, <laughs> she picked out a yoghurt from the shelf and she said, What is this? <laughs> Which is exactly what you want Grace Jones to do, not know uh, what yoghurt is. This is LBC. With Nick Abbott. You're joking. Phil texts, you were chatting about great movies. Have you ever watched No Country for Old Men? Watched it. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? Yeah, I got clips. He says, I watched it for the first time today and it was really good. Javier Bardem, is, as a hitman, steals the film. I wasn't keen on his character in Bond's Skyfall, though. No, me neither. Um, yeah, no. Was it Skyfall or was it... Uh, no, it was Skyfall, yeah. Um, it's extraordinary. All you've got to do is mention James Bond, and a billion people want to uh, put their oar in. It's very, very important to people. Get it right, uh, Barbara Broccoli. You're in big trouble. Huge. Mick texts, So, subscriptions to the Southwest Norfolk Bugle have gone through the roof, as people hope to get the news first, that Liz Truss will follow Theresa May's announcement that she will stand down as an MP in her local paper. People can't wait, Liz. Absolutely. You've delighted us enough. <laughs> I can't believe that she still thinks that we're interested in what she's got to say. <laughs> the delusion is strong with this one. East Ham. Hello, John. Oh, hello, Miss Abbott. I'm so glad you took my call. I would like to uh, nominate Clive Owen as James Bond. No. Too old. And yes, I know, but I think he deserves at least one James Bond. And also, I would like... <laughs> I no, would like. It's not a consolation prize for having uh, been around long enough. 
Yes, but I think he should have uh, got the part years ago. No, too opinion. smooth, too suave. No. Uh, can, can I nominate somebody else to play M? Go on. George Lazenby. Be brilliant. Oh. Think about it. Is he still alive? Oh, he's still alive. George still Lazenby. Yeah. Yeah, can you imagine him coming back as M? Everybody, the oldies would fly. Well, back, yeah. No doubt about well, it. Well, they would, uh, they would recognise yes. him, yeah. I tried to watch no. that film and it, um, I don't know, it just didn't seem like James Bond to me, so I, I skipped it. Well, I think it was very unfortunate. I think it's like uh, uh, like wine. It grows with age yeah, and it's quite better. possibly, yeah. Yes, because uh, it was a brilliant um, blowfield, Telly Savalas, very underrated, uh. and he went on to play Kojak. Yeah, I know so, that. Uh, well, he, went, that was, he went on to you, uh, have a, a, a career as a singer, if you can believe that. I know, it's unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, 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 it's such a great comedy act. Anybody uh, could do it. Yeah. Yes, anybody could do it. Uh, but, no, I would like the last to come back as M. And, I, um, well, I was always a fan of Clive Owen. I always thought he was underrated. Hmm. And no, he doesn't a, look like he's been hit in the face enough. He, he has to have a certain uh, roughness about him. After Daniel Craig, you can't go back to Suave. Yeah, that... Well, um... Well, I like the... I always like the old school Bonds. Have you watched Bond from the start? Sean yeah, Connery. Yeah. And... Uh, I would, yeah, George Lazenby kind of grows on you because he's a bit of a character and he's still alive today. And also Roger Moore, well, it's Roger Moore, the saint and all that. But I think after Roger Moore, something went wrong. I don't know uh, what happened to that. I, I mean, Daniel they, they were in want of uh, somebody who really fit the role. Uh, they just they they found um, a few people that were too suave. Um, uh, what's his name? The uh, the guy who did a few of them. His first one was excellent, but then after that, sort of uh, uh, sort of tailed yes. off. Pierce Brosnan, um, Daniel. Well, Pierce Brosnan, I always thought was Bond. I really did. If you had to think of somebody that to play Bond, Pierce Brosnan would be that. I mean, I saw well, him Remington. I, I saw him in Remington Steel, and I, I wasn't a big fan of that. But right. when he played Bond, he like stepped up to the mark. Well, and, the first uh, film that he made, yes, was excellent. I cannot believe yeah. that I'm still talking about James Bond on this show, and it's like two hours, uh, two hours later. I know, it, it's, I've just gone to the Bond uh, right. thing anyway. Okay. But I must admit, Daniel Craig, the first two movies he made as Bond, I thought, oh my god, you've you've just added something to Bond. And yeah. then they had the break, and then they were terrible. It came. Yeah, the, right. the, yeah hey, I hey, totally listen, agree with you. Yeah, okay. Abbott. All right. Listen, John. Yeah. I, I've, I've got to go because I cannot talk about James Bond on this show for a single solitary second more. All of the stuff that's going on, and we're uh, obsessed about who's going to uh, who's going to play pretend in a film that won't be out for years. But I appreciate the call there, John. <laughs> There's more important things to talk about. There really are. But apparently not to um, anybody that's, uh, you know, that is listening to this show. You mentioned James Bond and everybody wants to uh, put their oar in. It really is quite extraordinary how much it occupies people's minds, even when they're not thinking about it. They have opinions about it and they will just come pouring out just uh, at the very mention of the, of the words of the, of the name of the character. And still they come. I don't know if I can take any more calls about James Bond. I just can't. I've, I have made my decision, and then my decision is final. It should be that bloke from Starred Up, whose name I can't remember. Mick texts. No, no. John says. I've read the one from Mick. He says, I was texting somebody the other day and included all three spellings of there, as in E-R-E, E-I-R, -E -E and Y apostrophe R-E, correctly. Included all three spellings of there correctly. I was so pleased with myself, I had to point it out to her, says John. Who? John, by the way, he's spelt uh, J-O-N. No, so he, he, he can spell there, but not his own name. Can I interest you in an H that remains silent, John? Debbie says, I agree with you. Cillian, Cillian, Killian? I don't know. Cillian Murphy would be a bleep bad, a very bad word for the, for bad, bond. He is weird. <laughs> he is weird looking. Yeah, I know. In every role, he does that strange death stare thing, just like Paddington Bear. Oh, his um, patented stare. Right. Oh, and Oppenheimer was a waste of three hours that I'll never get back. Most overrated, boring film ever. 
I would agree with that. I mean, I don't know about ever, but uh, yeah, it was um, no. It was not what I was expecting, that's for sure. And having um, seen it and knowing what to expect, now I might um, not dislike it as much if I see it again, but I would not rush to uh, see it again. And as a as a blockbuster, it just seemed weird. Like, what's the point of having that film in IMAX? Why would you want to see Cillian Murphy's face, 60 foot wide, in, um, like, like a, a cat's eye, fish eye lens? Why would you want to see that? I mean, it's not like um, he gets on a motorbike and d j jumps off a cliff, is it? I didn't really understand that whole thing that it's a, it's a blockbuster. It, it's a, it, it was a quiet overly long film that was um, kind of uncomfortable and, uh, and and somewhat dense by, by which I do not mean stupid I mean it was uh, you know it, was, it wasn't light and uh, fluffy like Barbie was for instance which is a hell of a lot more enjoyable than Oppenblumenheimer but I suppose you think that makes me an idiot to say that Tony says, was anybody else surprised that Jeremy Hunt did not announce further funding for the return returnership scheme this week? The scheme to get pensioners back to work. With 60 Tory MPs already announcing their retirement from the workforce, there will, there will be a shortage of places on the returnership scheme. I hear that Theresa May is keen to return to the fields of wheat as a scarecrow. No training required. Sounded very much uh, like a listener with material to me. Oh, no. But I do have detailed files on what uh, Jeremy Hunt has done to pensioners. And it's not good. And um, it doesn't say much for his prospects. Well, I'll get to that in a while. 0345 6060 973. That's the same as the WhatsApp number. And if you are uh, texting, it's 84850. If you're on Twitter, it's Nick A at lbc.co.uk. 0345 6060 973. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and. Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Oh, hello. I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio making a picture again. It's a radio show, dear. So, uh, the uh, the fallout from the ex super soar away exciting budget as um, continues to, I don't know, fall out. The fall <laughs> I apologise. Pensioners are the biggest losers from the budget, apparently, taking an £8 billion collective hit, economists claim. Damning assessments came from the Institute for Fiscal Studies and the Resolution Foundation, whose think tanks saying stealth taxes will leave the elderly worse off at the end of this parliament. Oh, I'm going to need dream of being invited to think in a tank. Wouldn't that be marvellous? And pensioners, of course, must be absolutely delighted with this, as I heard that everyone knows what they voted for. <coughs> According to the Institute for Fiscal Studies, most pensioners will be six hundred and fifty pound a year worse off by 2027 which is brave of a Tory government that only appeals to pensioners now I mean there's not a person in the land under the age of death that is considering voting conservative at the next election assuming that we are allowed to have another election and it is not cancelled for our safety the resolution foundation found that those aged 66 and over were set to lose an average of £770. It's like the government just don't care anymore. They can't even be bothered to pander to their fans now. It's like a scorched earth policy. Make the country as sick, both physically and economically as possible, retreat to their lair after losing the next election and start blaming the Labour Party for everything that ails the nation the second they're voted out. It sounds like a plan, doesn't it? 
In fact, it sounds like the plan. We have a plan, 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 plan and plan, plan and plan, plan, or you just go back to square one. That's why it's so important we stick to this plan. Yeah, stick to the plan, otherwise we'd go back to square one. With the Labour Party. And, <laughs> and <laughs> who wants that, apart from everybody? Uh, the Chancellor's decision to cut the national insurance over income tax was criticised by several uh, senior Tory MPs. Former Home Secretary Suella Braverman said... <laughs> I mean, seriously, is, is she still talking? Thank you, Cruella Braverman, you have delighted us enough. Labour Work and Pensions spokesmodel Liz Kendall said pensioners watching this week's budget have felt left out and let down. Well, they should try and remember that feeling when they're trudging down to the voting booth. Hey, pensioners! Wake up, sheeple, it's later than you think. And uh, news just in, by the way, Jeremy Hunt today scrambled to quell a pensioner backlash to his budget. By favouring a move on national insurance over income tax, it's been estimated that Hunt has left tax-paying pensioners with an £8 billion collective hit. And he has warned that he has put 37 Tory seats at risk, including his own. There is a God! Oh. Cannot happen fast enough. Uh, Huddersfield. Hello, David. Good evening, Nick. Yes, now sir. then, you keep scaring us with the pos prospect, the possible prospect of no general election. Yeah. So the question I ask is this. George Galloway, the man of the hat, getting this um, seat, it, it, has it threatened them to such an extent that the two existing main parties are in meltdown over the loss of their almost monopoly of power over the last goodness knows how long? Mm. Do I think that they're concerned that they're going to that it's not going to be a duopoly anymore? That it won't be either one or the other? No. Well, there's a big, there's a lot of talk about um, a, th there could be a hundred independent MPs standing at the next uh, general election. Yeah, you, you know how many will win? Zero. <laughs> I bet you zero. Well, returning then to um, James Bond. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Let's investigate that more. Well, just, just one moment. I think George Galloway would be a great Blofeld. Because he seems to have frightened them like he's some sort of supervillain. Yeah, uh, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, he was an MP twice before. And what, yeah, and what happened? Nothing. No, not a lot. But then again, he might have had a mountain lair and been planning all this time. We, we, we can't be certain. Oh, well, I'm, it, why yeah. are they so scared? My, my bet is he does live in a, in a hollowed out volcano. I mean, you can't prove otherwise. But he was an MP before. Why are people talking about this like it's the end of uh, the world as we know it? Uh, well, it twice, be. twice he was an MP, and I bet you, no one in this audience can re recall a single solitary thing that happened during his uh, during his uh, reign. Here's another question: Then did he get more votes when he was on Big Brother than when he was an MP? <laughs> yeah, almost certainly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I've got, Nick. All right, thanks a lot, mate. Yeah, people uh, just. Uh, pounding the number into their phones. Please make it stop, they were saying. Yeah, I looked at um, the uh, the top of his head when he was being sworn in, and it didn't look like um, any uh, any injuries were present to me. You know, the excuse why he wears that hat all the time. I think he wears the hat all the time to differentiate himself from other, all the other white, bald guys. <laughs> to make it, to give him uh, give himself a bit more gravitas. You know, it's his thing now. Like, uh, Bodger's got his hair. The great big greedy nincompoop. The great big greedy nincompoop has got his hair. Paw! You know, all that, that routine. Um, Rishi Sunak has got... Pff, hair oil? I don't really know. What, what, what is there to recommend to Rishi Sunak? What's his thing? Other than being... Sort of desperately... Adenoidly... Um... I don't even know how to describe him. He just seems so yearn... He just seems to yearn for approval, doesn't he? Well, you, <laughs> you get none round these parts. <laughs> Try looking somewhere else. 0345 um, I I want to get round to um, Johnny Rotten. And plenty of other things as well. There was a, um, 
a, a mental uh, the state of the words world's mental health they um they asked half a million people about this a half a million respondents in 71 countries over over uh, nine regions and they produce a, a report called the mental state of the world report it's an annual report from the global mind project and and then they rank countries by their uh, their mental health and whether the people in those countries are say that they are distressed and struggling guess who came out worst go on i double dare you guess of all the countries on earth guess which one's worse well i'll get to that in a while O three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Hemel Hempstead. Hello, Lee. Hi. Lee. Oh, you have to turn the radio down, Lee. It'll fry your oh, mind. Yeah. I'll tell you what. My my radio is on on my phone, and my phone is six or seven seconds ahead of my radio. Does wow. that make sense? That's, no, not not at all. Well, it was fourteen seconds ahead when I first were hanging on. I've had them both running to, to check the time. But it, it, uh, are you I, are you sure you're not living in a parallel universe, I living in a world of make believe? <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay, I'm then. Serious, Nick. Right. Yes, Lee. Um. Well, I, I don't know whether they passed the message on to you. Did they? Message. There's been uh, a message what for I was, me. What I was. What I was. Yes. What I was seriously going to say to you. Oh yes. Uh-huh. Well, it was about the um, iceberg, yeah? Iceberg? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, down in the uh, Antarctic, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, well, it very much depends on uh, where in space you're looking at us. I mean, if you were upside down, it would be up in the Antarctic. I'm every other which way. Every other anyway, which way, right. Anyway, that apart. The glacier. This is the Thwaites Glacier, the Doomsday Glacier. Yes, I know this. I know this. Um... My when it isn't my idea. It was the idea of a very Huxley-like person who was my partner some years back. He just died now. He died in two thousand and eighteen. Yeah. And um, he suggested because you said something about the it's still attached to the base, but it's melting, and so it would come off or something. Is that right? Yeah, like the Wicked Witch of the West. It's melting. Well, then listen, will you please? So it needs the divers to go underneath. <laughs> and are you talking and to me? Are you talking yes. to me? There's I nobody am, else I'm here. Sorry, <laughs> watch you. Um, they need the divers not to stop it releasing, but to release it as quickly as they can. Why and is then that? they want as many boats as they, they can get. Boats. Even if it's boats, a thousand, to tow it up to the Sahara. Tow it to the Sahara? I, yes, I'm being deadly serious. Right. Well, I'm, I'm glad, I'm did glad you about know, that. Did you know... Yeah, I am. Do you know... Uh, how far, how much of it melts, it would extend the level, sea levels. Ten, f- ten feet. But, now, are you being exact about that sort of yes, thing? Yes, I am. I'm using okay, facts. Okay, well, Nick. I am too. We're on the same plane, Nick. Okay? Oh, I seriously doubt that. If we're on the same plane, oh. I, I, I want to be um, upgraded. I'm going to ring off in a minute. Okay. <laughs> it's a dream come true. Thanks a lot, Lee, for, you know, whatever that was. 0345 6060 973. She's a very, very angry person. I don't know what she's angry with me for. I haven't done nothing. Kevin says, isn't it a great idea to put a curtain in front of a big iceberg to stop it melting, but continue to pump out carbons globally, causing the iceberg to melt? It's forward thinking, Nick, says Kevin. Yet nobody's going to do anything about it. It costs £50 billion in order to put a curtain in front of that... um, it just seemed like a dumb idea to me, but then I'm not a scientist in possession of facts. They're going to put a curtain in front of the Doomsday Glacier because if it melts, then the sea level rise will be 10 feet, which means essentially that uh, all cities next to water are going to go underwater. And as all cities are next to water, bar a few, I mean, that's why most cities are where they are because of the access to water. And um, so that is basically curtains for a life as we know it. Because if, <laughs> if the sea levels rose 10 feet, then uh, that's New York, 
Tokyo, London, of course, uh, Paris, everywhere. Everywhere that you would uh, conceivably uh, either know or have been to on holiday or could pinpoint on a map will be underwater. Unless the uh, this uh, crazy curtain idea works. It doesn't seem like it would work. They want a 63-mile curtain to uh, wrap uh, an iceberg in. <laughs> and it's going to cost $50 billion. 50 bit, not million, billion. And they're expecting governments around the world to pay for that. I'm going to take a wild uh, guess here and assume that they won't. Because they won't be able to point to an immediate, um, uh, an immediate improvement for all the money that they've spent. They will be able to point to something that, that doesn't happen. And that's no good for a politician. You won't be able to point to something that has happened. There, I did that. Not I prevented this thing that is in your, that you can only imagine from happening. So it's short-termism is what we'll do for the human race. I've said it over and over and over again. Hello? Is this thing on? Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. 0345 6060 973. Uh, Greg texts, Michelle Moan offered to supply the curtain to wrap the ice up. I'm sure she could supply uh, without making a profit if someone could find her. <laughs> Says Greg. Uh, she's on the boat. I've seen a picture. Jimmy Tex, Bond should not look like he's been in a fight. He should be posh and a bit camp, just like Roger Moore, Pierce Brosnan or Timothy Dalton. I don't think Timothy Dalton was camp. Uh, with a sense of humour, says Jimmy. No more Daniel Craig's, please. No, Jimmy has got that completely incorrect. Don't listen to him, Barbara Broccoli. And Troy Tex, and there is a spoiler in this. So if you haven't seen the last film, it seems hard to believe that you wouldn't know what happened. But uh, put your fingers in your ears. Spoiler alert. Warning, warning. He says, James Bond, did you not see the last movie? He dies at the end. However, a female agent takes over the 007 moniker, question mark, says Troy. I'm, I'm not sure that was actually a question. It's more of a statement with a question mark at the end of it. But uh, no. No, Troy. Is a bad Troy. Manchester, Raj. Hi there, Nick. How are you this yes, evening? Yes, good, thanks. Good, good. So I've got a few things to talk about, so I can tick him off my list. Yeah. First of all, George Galloway. Think of him in bed with his hat on. No. Not exactly. <laughs> or maybe he has it on in the shower. He doesn't have much hair. I just think he, he catches a look, uh, he, he catches a, the image of himself with a hat in the mirror and thinks, wow, suave, yep. sophisticated, a man about town. Catches a, uh, uh, the uh, image of himself without his hat on and he's just another old, um, white, bald guy. But apparently he's a very good speaker. He well, is a very good speaker, yeah, he's, there's he's, no he's doubt about it. When he starts yapping away, he's quite good at it. He's very good at it. So, this will be a bit of a complicated one I'm going to ask you now, Nick. Nick. So, you know, like, um, we have, well, the, the Treasury has to pay interest on the borrowing that it's got. Yes. Yeah, and that pays it to the Bank of England. Mm, not necessarily, but go on. Well, that's, but where did the, what happens with that money? Where does it go? <laughs> it, uh, where does it go? Nobody knows. It goes to the exactly. uh, the financial institutions and the wealth funds and the Ooh, hedge funds cool. and the bankers and all the rest of it that has uh, loaned us, uh, us. This, this money that nobody has seen the, the hide nor hair of. No, but it's a serious thing, though, because they don't do that in America. Because they've got trillions they and do. trillions of debt. Yes. No, they don't. They don't. They don't but, pay interest on it. Of course they pay interest on it. They don't. It says who? It says... Uh, it says me. The, the internet? Is that what you are going to say? <laughs> no, it says <laughs> me. They don't, though. They don't pay interest on it. Yes, they do. They don't. Oh, they do. I'm sure... I'm sure... The thing is, the thing is Nick, I'm sure somebody will come on and tell us exactly what they do. Well, I am telling you. No, not you, Nick. Somebody who's on oh, somebody who actually about. knows what they're talking about. <laughs> right, I get it. Okay. Uh, well, I think I had something else to say. Oh, this uh, iceberg thing with the um, melting soon. I was going to say, good job that they're not going to go ahead with HS2 from London up to Manchester. Oh, then, yeah, yeah. you Southerners will, will struggle and we'll be all right up north in Manchester. The... Um yeah, the, the, this excellent train uh, service is going to go from near the centre of Leeds to um, nowhere near the centre of London, exactly. on the outskirts. It's going to end in some place that... I've lived in London since 1978. I have never heard oh, of it. Yeah, but the thing is, it's only going to save you about 20 minutes. Well, yeah, but um, 
that's not the issue of it, though. They, they need oh. uh, more um, capacity on that line, apparently, for goods and services and so on. I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's for business people who who will, no. will of course be the only people who will be able to afford to travel on that blooming train. It's cost so much. Exactly. The other thing, you know, I've said this before, but why didn't we ask the Chinese or the Japanese or the Taiwanese to do it? Because they honestly, they have literally gone through t gone through mountains yeah, with their trains. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they so could have made it in about. Cost. They could have made it in about ten seconds flat, and it would have. Uh, yeah, exactly. It would be working already. We would have had it by now. We would have been like up and down country all yeah. day long. We'd be, be cheaper as well. We'd, cheaper. Yeah, we'd be complaining about how much it costs already instead of just waiting exactly. to complain about how much it costs. We'd, we'd be complaining how quickly the journey is and we haven't got time to complain about anything else. Yeah, we'll be on Zoom calls at home rather than travel on the train to go to uh, a, a business meeting in London and we'll be remarking about um, how expensive that train system is that nobody uses because everybody's on Zoom now. Their business persons don't travel anymore. Speaking of trains... Yeah. Did I, I don't think... I've, I got a train from Manchester to... I think it was uh, King's Cross once, and it was peak time. But have mm. a guess how much it cost in return. How much? To, from where to where? From Manchester to King's Cross. Return? Yeah, it was peak time, very mind. It was peak time, though. Right. Um, buy, like, I'm going the, to uh, say return. And now, do you have any um, discount cards? Are you an no. Are you an old age no, person? No, 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 no real card. No young person's real card. I'm going to say on. eighty-eight pounds. Oh, I better, I better got that right. Three hundred and sixty-three pounds. <laughs> Three hundred and sixty-three exactly. pounds. You can literally go to America for that for that much. You can. That's impossible. Three hundred and how many? Three hundred and sixty-three pound three six three. To go from it's London to forget. Manchester and back. Yeah. I mean, how long did that take? A couple of hours. It's normal time. It's normal time. About, no, about an hour and fifty minutes. I think it is now. Oh, it can't be that. It is. Well, what was it? A maglev train? Be that, you know. No way. Yeah, the, not uh, from London to Manchester. Coast, yeah. Not not in an hour or something. It must be more than that. Surely. I'm telling you, Nick. No, from uh, from Piccadilly to Kings Cross is less than two hours. Right. It only you... stops in a couple of places. Right. Stops at Stockport, I think, and then Stoke, and then one more place, and then you're in. You're there. God, did you hear that thump? What was that? <laughs> Hang on a minute. It felt like somebody had just like fallen off their chair. Are you all right in there? I'm fine. I'm going to go make sure they're okay. Out yeah, there. There, there was a heck of a thump. It, was, it shook the building, actually. <laughs> Honestly, have a look. It only takes about two, well, less than two hours. It takes with a, right. with a quick ish. Well, with a quick ish train, should I say? Right. So, what? What? Why did you want to get from uh, London to Manchester and back? What business did well, you have here? Explain yourself. Was, yeah, it was a work thing. But I didn't pay uh, for the ticket. Well, obviously, the company paid for it. Anyway, right. It well, yeah, they, they it's don't still, care. It's still a principle. If it had come out of your own pocket, then it would have been different, obviously. Yeah, of course. Yeah, when businesses pay for tickets, then the um, the, the buying is delegated to a, a, a grunt. And they're not remotely interested how much it costs. They just want to get on with their day. They want to, you know, go down, yeah. go down to the sandwich shop and uh, pick something uh, delightful out before it all, all goes. So they just... They, they just get on the phone. It's like planes as well. If a business a person uh, has a, pl a plane ticket bought for them, then it's bought for yeah. bought by someone who is not remotely interested in how much it costs. They just want to get the uh, to uh, to get the buying done in as short a time as possible. Yeah, but also this person who probably doesn't care what this guy's doing on the plane anyway. No, well, keeping his uh, hands to himself, I would hope. And um, keeping his um, belt buckled at all times, and uh, not interfering with the stewardess or steward. Sexist. Thanks a lot, Rog. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Phil text. I have the answer. Drill a large hole on Antarctica, which will drain all excess water into space. Well, that's just a good idea, Phil. Martin says, well, maybe we could, uh, you know how um, you get petrol out of a car by s sucking on a tube and then uh, you know, and then it sort of uh, all comes out. Maybe we could do that with um, like a giant siphoning, yeah, like a, like a giant pipe in space. Somebody should write this down. This is important. A giant space pipe. That's what we need. Suck all that water out. 
Martin says Trump has a sneering contempt for NATO and the EU, most Europeans, all migrants, free trade, environmentalists, the UN and international treaties. An indulgence of autocrats and like-minded anti-democrats like Putin and an overly aggressive attitude to competitors like China. What's not to dislike, says Martin? <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. What's not to dislike? Yes, there's nothing likable about him. Don't be rude. 0345 6060973. Tooting. Hello, Jan. Hi, Nick. Yes, Hi. Jan. Oh yeah, I'm I'm um I'm ringing up just to to make a point or to I'll, I'll avoid the thing about Jane Bond. Yeah. About Jane Bond, um, the idea is to have a Jane Bond. Right. Well, I'm well, going to. I would uh, I would support I'll that, that, but I'll it's come, not to... it's not a replacement for James Bond. You could have Jane Bond in her own, uh, you know, franchise. Sure, why not? But yeah. Jane Bond can't be James <laughs> Bond. No, 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 of course not. Anyway, Nick, I was, uh, that wasn't what I was going to say. That wasn't what I said to your um, producer. Whatever it is. Yeah. One of these, these, the, the, there's always lists and about, you know, what we should do to stay healthy. And last week, there was a lot on the young US. And beautiful. US um, it's what do you your call duty it? to be beautiful. What to avoid? What? what to avoid. Yes. And now this week, um, and then there's this new, there's always something new. I know you're a bit perhaps cynical about something, but they say for those who are over 60, a fibre pill will boost your brain into... Oh, healthy. yeah, I read that. <laughs> yeah. But, then, but wouldn't but it be better then... to just eat fibre, eat things that have got <laughs> fibre in them? I mean, all these no, pills but... and these supplements, and wouldn't it be better just to get it from a real source as opposed to some concentrated pill oh, or yeah, whatever yeah, it yeah, is? Oh, yeah, I agree, yeah. yeah. But I was coming, uh, the thing I wanted to say was because the, your show is... is is, it has a lot of humour, so it's, it's very addictive. But they're saying laughter. They, they say they've got the scientific explanation for why laughter is the best medicine and humour, which you have. They um, can't possibly have the scientific explanation for that. Yes, they have because it, because they're saying um, they're saying that. Well, that it releases... Endorphins! Natural, I bet. Yeah, and natural opioids in yeah. our body. We've got natural opioids, uh, which I'm, is... I'm on about three, three or four giggles a week now, man. But I can but handle I it. But I don't... I mean, perhaps that's why you have a lot of listeners who are addicted to your programme. Are they? You're, I think well, you're I'm, one of the few I'm, who's I'm like a, humorous. I'm like a drug dealer. No, I mean, you, you're one of the few presenters that are humorous. Well, um... You're prime time, you're prime time, so... Not, not really. <laughs> not, mm -hmm. I wouldn't what call this mean? prime time, no. Oh, no, weekends, weekends, no, yeah. you know, people it's, are unwinding. It's prime on time weekend. between 10 and 1, yeah. It's the, be it's the best hours between 10 and 1 I'm on. So, so you can help help people release their... Endorphins. Oh, happy yeah, I'll, I'll do it with both hands on an individual oh, oh. basis. Here, Jan, I've got to go. Unfortunately, uh, time's up. Uh, I, there's nothing I can do about it. When time's up, time's up. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? Uh, seriously, I have absolutely no idea. Andy texts Lewis Collins, brackets Bodie. I am. Um, he was the uh, the guy off uh, that show, the Persuaders. No, nope, that was Roger Moore and Tony Curtis. God, can you imagine Roger Moore and Tony Curtis in the same TV program? Not just one, a series that must have cost an absolute fortune. No, not the Persuaders, the Pretenders. No, nope, that's a band. Rock and roll. The Professionals. <laughs> Bodie out of the professionals would have made a great bond, but he's dead now, so that won't work, says Andy. Uh, what about Jason Statham? He looks like he's been punched in the face daily. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> but he's too famous and he's too old, so it's a no. Can we please wipe up these bond suggestions? Will says, so, so your ideal bond is something of a ladies' man who has killed a lot of people and looks like he's been punched in the face. Boris Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts, Budge? I, I can't comment on Can't comment on that. Blah, 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 blah. Mark says, David Bowie originally tried to get Dudley Moore to play piano on Hunky Dory. Dudley couldn't do it, so Rick Wakeman got the job. True story, says Mark. Well, how would you know, Mark? 
That does seem unlikely. Why would you get Dudley Moore to play it when you could, when you got your pick of session musicians? And, well, because he was a good pianist. But Rick Wakeman uh, wasn't no slouch neither. Hi, Gates. Hello, Andrew. Oh, hello. I'm trying to get my confidence together to speak to you. I spoke to you a few years ago and I made you laugh and that delighted me for weeks afterwards. It was about diet. Oh, yes. How's it going oh, for you? Yes. Oh, uh, pretty badly, pretty but badly. I'm being heroic. I yeah. swim every day, cold water, that kind of thing, and oh. I'm fairly handsome, getting my looks back. <laughs> um, I was going to do two things to try and help everybody. Um, one is is an idea I had for James Bond, and I phoned Eon Productions in that lovely part of Mayfair and left a message with my number saying, please get back to me. And I just looked it up, and it's in the Financial Times, uh, 16th of November, 2018, Levison Wood Explorer. Now, I've heard him speak since, and also he may be not pretentious enough. I'm not, I'm not saying things correctly. In other words, he's, 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 a, he's a sort of good human that doesn't really care about trying to look cool sort of thing, and maybe that's an issue I don't know, but who the is, photography who, who is, is Levis- he's fantastically handsome. He's an explorer, ex-military, and he just, he's got hairy arms. He just looks gritty and yes, marvellous. Yes, but is he an actor? No, and I think in a way someone who isn't an actor, I mean, Roger Moore used to delightfully uh, put himself down for being a dreadful actor. He's actually hilarious, Roger Moore. He's an extraordinary, beautiful man, actually. And so sometimes you just need someone who's like a kind of soldier, like, right. a, like, a, like a naval officer to, you know, come yeah. in wearing a beautiful Savile Row suit. I get Tom all that. Tom Ford suit. Yeah, you know? no, no, never a Tom Ford suit, no. Um, I, yeah, I understand that, but um, yeah, that's not really how films work. Well, I think that's a problem. I think we should be proud. When people ask me to define my country, of which I'm very proud, mm. and if I would be proud of any country, I love all countries, really. All of them. Try not to leave everyone out. Really? But our country is defined, in a way, by the word even song. Is it? Our collegiate choirs, and I was in one in Cambridge as a boy, I was at St. John's, and I'm very proud of that. It's an extraordinary choir. But even song, and then the pub afterwards, and the pints of bitter... And Aston Martin and Bentley is all part of that. You know, church, pub, pints, right. pipe, Harris Tweed. And so Bentley and is... Uh, Bond. Bentley is... The beer is now Japanese. The Bentley is <laughs> German. And, um, Bentley is German. Uh, the Aston Martin is yeah. American, is it? Who's, who's no, bought it now? No, no, I'm afraid dreadful Mercedes have got in through the back door. Have they? Like Volkswagen. Right. Yes, they've... they've They've whacked one of their AMG engines into ah, underneath the bonnet. Well, that is a marvellous you know, sounding thing, let's be honest. I think it sounds like somebody burping rather too for too long down no, the motorway. I, th- I, I, think it, I think it sounds more like it's getting on for something that sounds as good as, and I, this is a controversial thing I am about to say, oh, no. good, sounds good, as good. good as the Spitfire engine. Oh, oh well, the Spitfire is a V12 Rolls-Royce Merlin. And right. there's nothing really beats that. Not for sound, I, no. But I think that the... Not the AMG in an ordinary Mercedes, but there was an SLS, which is an extraordinary-looking yeah. car. It looks like a Batmobile. And the sound that... copy of Aston Martin. The, the, the on, sound sorry. that that makes is amazing. For a Mercedes, but not for an even song, pipe-smoking, Penhaligon perfumes, brilliantly witty, funny, <laughs> rugby-playing, sort of English sort of plot, you know, right. like we should all aspire to be. Right, and I, and I wonder where uh, who owns Penn Halligans now? Because <laughs> I seriously doubt it's British. I'm willing to be proven incorrect, but I very much doubt it's British. All right, thanks a lot, Andrew. Like, he's taken us down memory lane. Okay, what's this? What What, what is this? So it turns out the um, thing about Dudley Moore and... Shall I read it? David, sure, Is it ahead. worth reading? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking, um, yeah, he's not that sure. Um, they pulled in just behind the fridge. What does that mean? Oh, one second. That's, that's the first line. That doesn't make any sense. They pulled in just behind the fridge. What does that mean? This image of an amused David Bowie was taken 50 years ago this evening when he met up with Peter Cook and Dudley Moore following the duos behind the fri- fridge. Press, <laughs> behind the fridge. Fringe, surely. Or maybe that was the fridge. That was the joke. Uh, following the duo's Behind the Fridge presentation at London's Cambridge Theatre on the 9th of May 1973. Oh, what a year. 
Bowie was a big fan of the pair and had been for some time. Years later, he would slip into character with Brian Eno on occasion, as remembered by Brian on David's passing in 2016. 2016. Was it really that long ago? Blimey. And the world hasn't been the same since. Yeah, thanks a lot, David Bowie. You couldn't last for a little longer. See what you've done? The world went upside down when David Bowie died. He said, um, Brian Eno said, David's death came as a complete surprise, as did nearly everything else about him. I feel a huge gap now. We knew each other for over 40 years in a friendship that was always tinged by echoes of Pete and Dud. Was it? In 1971, David had asked Dudley Moore if he would play piano on Hunky Dory. It was not to be. However, Bowie managed to sneak the title of the Pete and Dud show into the lyric of Young Americans as quoted above. Oh, that's the quote. They pulled in just behind the fridge. Wow. The stuff you learn on this show. Educational, no? No. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three Portsmouth. Hello, Dave. Oh, hi, Nick. Nice to hear. Nice to ask to speak to you. Yes, Dave. Uh, um, your jingles, by the way, are they numbered? How do you get them up so quickly? That's why I want to know. I have to memorise where they are with my brain. What on the keyboard? Yeah. yeah? Mm. Okay. That's, I always wondered that. I, I like the disgusting one. <clears throat> um, <laughs> what, what I spoke, what I, what I found about is the budget, this famous budget this week. Now, yes. as you have any topic on this show, which is really handy, I thought I'd mention it. Now, have you noticed that the cabinet ministers are very clever at not mentioning things and hope we don't notice? And a good example is the, with all their hype about how wonderful they are and how much tax they're saving, everybody, they don't mention the personal allowance which is affecting everyone who earns money. And we are having it frozen for years. Yeah. And you're probably talking about five years in total, I think, before it gets increased with inflation. So that's a stealth tax. So stealth don't that, tax do is the correct answer. Stealth tax. Yeah, so they're, they're taxing us, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make a headline because it's something that... It's the absence of something rather than the presence of something. They don't yeah, increase right. it with uh, inflation. It stays yeah. where it is, meaning that everybody uh, everybody pays more. Yeah. When we had the um, 11 percent inflation and it's, uh, the t uh, that time, personal allowance is frozen. That's quite significant. They don't mention anything Huge. about that. No, they also, don't. they don't mention the fact that we're going to get extra council tax every year and extra utility bills. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at everything, to, in all the whole equation into account, you'll probably find that you know, everyone will be worse off. I don't understand how they think we're... They must think we're stupid. Yes, they do, with good reason, because <laughs> the, the people who have been... <laughs> whose lives have been ruined the most by the regime keep voting for the very same people who have ruined their lives. Yeah, and also, I don't understand how they are... They're not... They're meant to be intelligent, some of these people, but they actually think we like them, and they think that we um, we can't wait to vote them in again. Right. They just haven't got a clue, have they? How, people, people have no respect for most of them. Um, uh, do you have anybody in mind? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I, I cannot believe that people like Cruella Bradman and uh, uh, Liz uh, the Blunder Trust still think that people are interested in what they have to say. I mean, what is it that possesses them to come to that conclusion? I am mystified. What, what, about, um, what about the um, debate on the budget? Um, when everyone left, there's about eight people left in the yeah. chamber on, um, uh, in the evening. And guess what? Jeremy Corbyn was there, bless his cotton socks, with, um, his, as an independent badge on, because he got chucked out of Labour. And he, was, he was standing there waffling on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he doesn't, after 40 years of being an MP, he doesn't understand that nobody actually listens to what he says. Um, well, they write it down, and so you can <laughs> consult it later. But yes, it is quite um, alarming how little our parliamentarians seem to take part in the process for which they get paid a vast amount of our money. And what about the ones who are always on their phone during debates? It should be... A, I mean, it's a total joke, isn't it? That should it? be a sackable offence. Exactly, a sackable offence, yes. Well, the thing is, that's the, th that's the thing. It's never going to be addressed because they're not interested, they're, what any of us lot think. But um, it's lovely to talk to you. I didn't like you at first when I heard you a year <laughs> or two back, but I do now. I've got used to... Because you, you grow on, you grow on me I've bit. grown on you like a mould, yes. I'm glad to hear it. Thanks a lot, Dave. I've heard that a lot in my uh, in my career
if you want to if you want to call this a career yeah i've heard that a lot at first people think oh this is different i don't like it that's the initial reaction but that's just a that, that's a survival mechanism essentially kicking in if it's different then your initial reaction is i don't like it until proven otherwise I mean, can you remember your uh, the first time you ate um, uh, Brussels sprouts, for instance? Oh, no, Mum, I don't like it. But now, you still don't like it, but less so. You know, you got used to it. It's like whiskey. At first, uh, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Booze. Hey, 0345 6060973. Lydia says, I'm a bit behind, but is that Jack O'Connell who starred in Lady Chatterley's Lover? I bet you've not seen it. No, I have not. She says, no car chases, but he does push an electric wheelchair, which is perfect practice for James Bond. Why would you push an electric wheelchair? Unless it's a wheelchair that is an electric chair. You know, mobile death. I bet that would go down a uh, storm in America. Uh, but no, I have not seen Lady Chatterley's Lover. Um, did they have electric wheelchairs in the era of... Uh, maybe they uh, modernised it. But no, I've not seen that. I'm not remotely interested. But I, I do maintain that he should be the next Bond. But get him now before, while he's still young enough to do it, Barbara Broccoli. I hope you're listening to this. Paying attention, writing this stuff down. This is important. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Come on, we're running late. We are running late. Doug texts, I'm with you, Nick. Where have the billions gone? It's a total scandal. Why are there no questions being asked? Uh, I would think that there are no questions being asked because they know what the answers are and they don't want us to know what the answers are. What is uh, somewhat disappointing is that the Labour Party aren't setting out their, uh, their case and saying, we will investigate every single last penny that has gone missing over the last few years, particularly since the, uh, you know, the it was among us. COVID. Yeah, they're saying nothing about it. It's kind of, um, and which gives me the, uh, the reason to believe that they're not going to do anything about it and that the people who have nicked all of our money are going to get away with it. John texts, in response to what Pennsylvania has given us, Groundhog Day. John texts, in response to what Pennsylvania has given us, Groundhog Day. <laughs> Good one, John. Bromley, hello, Joe. Hello, mate. Nick, lovely show. Thanks. Can I can I just say this? That the very fact that these people who are in power are telling us what to do have been doing it all their lives, right? We can't have it, but they can. Right? Yes. So they get a cab, they get a cab, keep the meter running, right? We pay for that. They go in, they sign in, <laughs> they get their 350 quid. Used to be, <clears throat> didn't it? Then they walk out. And they go, this, is, this is the House well, of Lords you're talking about, yes. Oh, but it's an absolute disgrace. And it's they an think outrage. we're so stupid, yes. we don't know. It's appalling. Well, they're, Absolutely appalling. there's justification in them thinking that we are stupid because we keep voting for the party that keeps doing this to us. So how do, how do we not get that round of, and about that corner? Shall we vote for somebody else? Who would you vote for? I would vote Let for somebody, Joe. That's the most important part. The Even in a general election, there's still about a third of us who can't be bothered to get up off our sofa and walk the 300 yards down to the voting booth to re register our opinion, which I think is but an absolute be... blooming outrage. And, for, we... and, and by that measure, if reasonable, ordinary people don't vote, then we get run by extremists who will vote no matter what the weather's like outside. So here we are, and this is where we're at. Yes. Now, look, look at the state of things today. Awful. We all know it's a, an absolute debacle. It's an absolute debacle. Mm -hmm. Who the hell is going to solve the problems we've got? There I say nobody. Let, well, let's give the, the big fat greedy nincompoop a chance. The great big greedy nincompoop. Well, 
Well, with, with respect, I mean, that, that <laughs> isn't going to solve the issue, is it? No, we need, just make it worse. Have we, have we, can we not find... We've got Joe Biden, we've got Donald Trump, mm. well, they're, they're in their own melee. Have <laughs> we not got an answer to our own problems? For God's sake. Let's bring need... Liz back. Absolutely. But 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 that isn't going to be good enough, is it? Well, we it, need it won't somebody. be remotely good enough, no. Ma- give me a name. Just give me a name. How about this can one? I give, can you. I give you a name? Yes, go ahead. I can't. That's the saddest reality. Oh, I yeah. can't. You haven't, you haven't got a name on the tip of your tongue, no. Well, no. All right, well, I want you to think one. about it a little bit more, uh, Joe. I want you to sit there and contemplate a while, all right? I, I've been doing that for years, my friend. <laughs> Always draw the curtains before doing that. You don't want to frighten the neighbours. Thanks a lot, mate. 0345 6060 973. Julie texts, My personal favourite for the new 007 would be Matthew McFadden. He looks really good in a tux and a bow tie. Surely that's all that matters. Who's Matthew McFadden? Um, in brackets, Succession. He was in... Well, I saw Succession, but I don't know who Matthew McFadden is. But whoever it is... If it was in sex, if it was in succession, then no, because none of those look like action heroes. Of course not. Uh, Tony says I had a vision. Jason's blimey, what's that? What is that? What what have you just put on my uh, screen? It was meant to just be a link to an issue of Matthew McFadden, and it uh, seems like the entire Bible. It does, yeah. Let it's, me just sort that out for you. Sorry about that. Uh, UKLGRP4. Uh, it's, it's, this is like one of those. Um, one of those password um, uh, generating engines. It's just a string of meaningless uh, letters and numbers. He's going to uh, come up with something better than that. One moment, please. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, you've got to be kidding me. No. <laughs> a, a thousand times no. No, 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 no. Definitely not. Looks like an accountant comes a message from next door, which is completely correct in every respect. That's a terrible idea. You should be ashamed of yourself, Tony. You're an idiot, and I mean that in the worst possible way. No, that was Julie, wasn't it? Sorry about that, Tony. Julie is an idiot, but then she knows what she's done. Tammy texts Orson Welles for James Bond. Well, well, get his agent on the phone right now. Not picking up? Keep trying. Alex texts, just a thought on your out-of-date formats. I purchased the new Judas Priest album on vinyl, which comes with a free download of the album. <laughs> right. Well, what are you going to do with the vinyl, then? You're just going to put it on a shelf and look at it. Well, it's, you know... The, yeah, they're good things to look at. Good things to look at and have and hold. Like... That the artwork, you just don't get artwork on a CD, and you certainly absolutely and totally don't get the artwork on a streaming. I mean, um, some of those, uh, like Trilogy, not not Trilogy, the um, that uh, ELP album with the uh, H.R. Geiger stuff on it. The, uh, the, the folded in half in the front. Marvellous. Um, physical graffiti, of course. Rock and roll! In its original form. Um, unbeatable. Wish you were here, naturally. I could go on. Paul texts, the Tories are going to strap, scrap national insurance. Yeah, they aren't. He says, don't be surprised when they aren't decimated at the next election because of this. It'll save a lot of people a lot of money. No, it won't. The Tories are going to scrap national insurance. Don't be surprised when they aren't decimated at the next general election because of this. It'll save a lot of people a lot of money, says Paul. <laughs> no, it won't. It won't save uh, a lot of people a lot of money. What it will do is completely ruin all of the things that a lot of people rely on. Unless you're a billionaire, of course, and you've um, got the ability to pay for private uh, uh, health insurance. And your pension is... Uh, uh, you, you don't need a pension because you've got a, a bank full of cash. No. D- dismal idea from a, a regime that is uh, out of out of ideas and out of time. And on that subject, Alicia text.
the Tories are polling at 18% now. Wow. <laughs> really? How's that whole uh, Rishi Sunak uh, premiership going? Oh, fabulous. 18. Will they reach single figures by the time they call a general election? One can only hope now, says Alicia. Well, fingers crossed, Alicia. It's, <laughs> let's hope that they get exactly what they deserve in vast amounts. Sue texts, I'm convinced it's all planned that they know the mess that they've created and they know they can't put it right. So what better than blame an incoming government and think that we're thick? I, I do believe that Sue's got it. That's the plan. We have a plan, 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 plan and plan, plan and plan, plan. Or you just go back to square one. That's why it's so important we stick to this plan. Because we have a plan, we put that plan in place, where there is absolutely no plan. Right? We have got a plan, that plan is working. If we stick with it, we can deliver a brighter future for the country. But like my main message is plan, plan and plan, plan and plan, plan, no plan. 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 No plan.